Hello friends. Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto discovered the forbidden powers of Uzumaki bloodline. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Uzumaki Naruto Last member of the little-known Uzumaki clan after his parents were killed by the nine-tailed demon spirit, or so he was told, shortly after he was born the fourth Hokage, the leader of the village at the time, sealed the nine-tailed demon fox spirit into Naruto forever marking his destiny, the fourth Hokage died after sealing the demon within Naruto and his only wish was that Naruto be thought of as a hero, although regrettably he did not receive his dying wish. Naruto for as long as he could remember was shunned, shut out and ultimately excluded from everyone's attention except for the occasional cold glares from the adults that pierced him like icy. Dagger stabbing at his insides, and for whatever reason he was hated he did not know until the day a ninja gone rogue named Mizuki told Naruto the forbidden dark secret everyone who knew. Was ordered by law to never repeat, that the nine-tailed fox demon that was, supposedly, destroyed was sealed inside of Naruto's body. At first Naruto felt even more distant but after Aruka treated him with genuine kindness and respect he put his ultimate dream into full motion, one day he was going to be Hokage. A blonde hair ninja was lying in his old bed, hundreds of thoughts swirling around in his brain. We sat up and remembered he was back home, after four years of training he was back home at last, the years of training was tough but he had never felt stronger, or even in shape than as he was now, he had learned some new jutsus and perfected some old ones and Naruto couldn't help but smile as he thought of all his friends out loud as he drifts off to sleep. Sakura-chan, Neji-san, Ten-Ten, Lee-san, Kiba, Hinata-chan. In one of the many bedrooms in the Hyuga estate a slender, shy, looking girl with bright, oval white eyes sneezed in the middle of the night, almost waking her up, she was half asleep and blushing brightly as she muttered in her sleep, but Naruto-kun what if someone sees us? No I didn't say no. She opened her eyes to her dark, roomy bedroom, it had been almost four years since Naruto went to go train with one of the legendary Sanin and she was a little mad at herself because she didn't have the courage to see him off, she had felt very lonely with him gone even if he just saw her as a friend, and for some reason every night since he left she started to have very romantic and let's just say, explicit dreams, yeah explicit, oh Naruto-kun, and... With those words and a tear running down her pretty face she slowly drifts off to sleep. The bright light from the sun crept through Naruto's blinds into his face. Causing him to stir and wake up, he pulled out a fresh set of clothes out of his dresser and grabbed his forehead protector on his bedside table as he made his way into his shower. The hot water relaxed his sore muscles along with the rest of his body. He turned off the water and made himself breakfast. As he ate his pork ramen he wondered what was new with his friends over these past four years, as he finished eating he decided to give his friends a long-awaiting visit. Naruto decided it was a beautiful morning and he made a choice to go to the park for some well-needed sparring and hopefully an old sparring partner, as we walked around it seemed like a dream, nothing in this village has changed since he left and it gave him a sense of pure bliss as he lied down on a grassy hill in the middle of the park. Naruto heard someone creep up behind him and turning his head he say Lee running toward him with terrifying speed as he shouted, Naruto you're finally back. Quote, as he approached Naruto he was greeted with a rib crushing hug AMD handshake that nearly snapped his fingers off, it's so good to see you Naruto when did you get here? Naruto smiled and replied, I got back last night I wanted to surprise you guys. Lee gave one of his priceless nice guy expression with the thumbs up as he said, you had me surprised but just wait until I see the look on everyone else's face. Naruto merely smirked and said, that can wait until later. Hey Lee you want to spar to get our blood pumping. Lee looked like he was on the verge of tears of happiness and the minute he regained control he said, I would be honored Naruto. Naruto got up and took his shirt off and said, all right let's do this. Jiraiya woke up a little later that afternoon with a horrible hangover, damn the Tsunade he thought to himself. Just one drink come on you know you want to, one drink that's a laugh she must have refilled my sake four, five, six, maybe even seven times, I was completely wasted last night, I can't hold my sake to save my life. 
and with a cold shower and a shot of Tsunade's world-famous hangover remover he was ready for his day, and with a well-needed cup of coffee he makes his way toward the Hokage's office. Yawn. Morning Tsunade how'd you sleep? Tsunade merely grunted as she took another swig of hangover remover. I know what you mean we did go a little overboard last night, Jiraiya said, after the comment Jiraiya spoke again. So any news on Sasuke or Itachi and his group? Tsunade had her eyes closed, took a sip of coffee and shook her head lightly as she said quietly, we've had no leads on Sasuke, Itachi, Itachi's organization, or Orochimaru for that matter, but seeing as how Orochimaru can use that forbidden jutsu again we may be a little shorter on time than we thought. Jiraiya realized what she was saying as his face widened with shock and concern, and then Jiraiya finally said, how long does he have? Tsunade remained expressionless as she sipped on her coffee again and said, I'd say five to seven months at the most and I assure you if need be I will send a team of Junin. Jiraiya shook his head and frowned as he replied, Naruto's going to want to go more than anything are you going to exclude him? Tsunade made her first smile of the morning and said, on the contrary, if he can pass a special test then I will begin his training as a Junin. Jiraiya had a suspicious looking smile and asked, what kind of test? And how can we become a Junin from a Genin? I've never once heard of such a thing. Tsunade merely smirked and said, You'll find out soon enough, but enough of that I have an information gathering mission for you I'm going to need you to gather information on Orochimaru's whereabouts and return once a month to report, got it. Jiraiya sighed and looked down, Well at least I can conduct some more of my research, while I'm doing that he thought to himself. All right Tsunade I'll leave later today, see you in a month, and with a wave of his hand he vanished. Lee and Naruto had been pummeling each other for hours and neither was ready to give up just yet, Naruto lunged at Rock Lee with all of his might as he yelled, Rasengan. Just as Naruto made contact Lee yelled, Gate of Life open. Leaf Whirlwind, with an explosive display of Chakra Naruto's wave of spiraling energy made contact with Lee's bone crushing kick causing both of them to fly backwards. Lee panted and got up to help Naruto up, and as he pulled him up he said, that technique was amazing Naruto I had to open the gate of life just to match that power you've certainly gotten stronger Naruto. Naruto made a goofy smile and replied, thanks Lee but to be honest that right there was 50% of my true power. Lee looked excited and said, well tomorrow's let's see 90% when we spar again. Naruto smiled and said, sure Lee, Hey listen I am going to get myself a bowl of Ichiraku's ramen for lunch have a good one. And with that Naruto made his way to the ramen stand, he was so excited about eating ramen he ran there rather quickly, he made a sharp turn and was almost there when without warning he slammed right into someone, he got up he noticed two pearly white eyes staring at him in disbelief, she continued to stare as he got up. And Naruto-kun is that you? Naruto smiled and pulled her into a hug which caused Hinata's face to turn bright scarlet. He pulled away and said, of course it's me. Hanada but more importantly, are you okay? I ran into you pretty hard. Naruto reached down and helped her up from the ground, Hanada. Looked at the ground, blushing furiously as she said, I it's alright and Naruto kun I'm a alright. Naruto simply smiled and said, well that's good, hey listen Hanada how about we go get some ramen? My treat, just call it repayment. Hanada froze. She felt like time froze for a second and she was going to wake up from this dream any moment. Naruto, after a minute of silence said, so I'll take that's a yes. Hanada jumped and said, why yes, with a nod and a big smile on her face as they walked towards the Ichiraku's ramen stand. Look it's our best customer how've you been Naruto? Long time no see. Ichiraku said, Naruto made a big goofy grin and said, I've been great getting stronger and stronger every day. Ayame smiled and said, it's good to see our best customer's appetite hasn't chagged much. Naruto replied with a big goofy grin. Hanada smiled at how lucky she was even if it was just a bite to eat as friends. Naruto told Hanada he needed to do something but since Hanada's Naruto-kun was back she decided to follow him and see what he's up to. Naruto decided to roam around the village so he might bump into some more old friends but little did he know Hanada was following him from a small distance using her Byakugan to track his movements. Naruto was taking a walk through Rosemary Park, 
strolling silently as cherry blossoms were blooming and falling off of the surrounding trees very beautifully. He felt lighter as he was overwhelmed with familiar surroundings. Naruto looked toward the meadow and saw a familiar ninja with cherry blossom colored hair. Naruto's face lighted up and he waved and said, Sakura chan. Long time no see. Sakura looked up and smiled very wide and said back, Hey Naruto, how've you been? Naruto smiled back and approached Sakura. As he got closer and was pulled into a hug, Naruto realized Sakura's body has changed a lot in very attractive ways. Her breasts were bigger than when he last saw her, and her hair was long and beautiful again, and a very beautiful curves on her slender body. Naruto hugged her back and said, So, Sakura, how've you been? You've changed quite a bit. Sakura smiled sweetly and looked Naruto over and replied, so have you Naruto in a lot of good ways but you still have your boyish character hee hee. Naruto smiled and said coolly, just my boyish charm. Sakura smiled and pulled away from the hug and said, it's great to see you Naruto when did you get back. Naruto made his classic goofy grin and replied, last night but Jiraiya helped me put my things away before he went to Tsunade's for a drink. Sakura giggled in a way that felt very sexy to Naruto. Naruto thought to himself after a minute, Okay it's now or never, um Sakura do you think that sometime you and me could, a uh, do something sometime? Naruto's reply was a very unusual hug from Sakura and she slowly said, I'm sorry Naruto I just don't like you that way. As they broke the hug Naruto felt as if something very angry and depressing was eating away at his insides, Naruto said nothing and started to walk away, as he turned to leave Sakura yelled out, wait Naruto, aren't you going to say something? Naruto smiled darkly and replied, what's to say, even risking my life to bring back your beloved Sasuke isn't enough for you to ever love me, in the end, actually from the beginning it was hopeless, who am I trying to fool? And with that Naruto vanished. Naruto retreated to Team 7's old training grounds and leaned against the very tree Kakashi had lured him into a trap underneath when he had just barely become a genin, he was leaning his face down and crying. Naruto then made a sarcastic false laugh and said, Who am I trying to fool? Who could love or even care for that matter, something like me? A cursed child with a demon sealed. Inside of him, it's why Hiyashi hates me, it's why they all look at me. Like that, eyes cold as ice, eyes full of hatred, at times I wondered why I even exist, I have no purpose, it's not like I wanted this damn demon fox sealed inside of me I had no choice. Who could ever love a monster like me? Hokage. That's a laugh. I've had no one from the beginning and if the few that even cared for me at all or even acknowledged my existence for that matter knew about the demon fox, I'm too scared to even imagine what they would think about me then. And just as he finished speaking the shy Hyuga girl Hanata was walking toward him with tears in her beautiful pearly white oval eyes, Naruto looked up in surprise and shock wondering how much she had heard just now. Hanada wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck and cried onto his shoulder and said, Oh Naruto-kun no one should have to suffer that much. Naruto held her against him and asked her, How much did you hear? Hanada had a few tears rolling down her cheeks and replied, I heard everything Naruto-kun. Naruto looked away and said, Then how could you care about someone like me? I mean I'm a mon, but he was cut off as Hanada held him in a deep embrace, then Hanada said, Don't say it. You're not a monster, you're my Naruto-kun and nothing could convince me otherwise. Naruto found himself speechless and then words began to escape from his mouth. What reason could you possibly have to believe in me so much? Hanada released herself from the hug as she felt a blush cover her face and started to stutter. W-L-Y-U-S-C-N Naruto-kun, I uh well what I mean to s say is, Hanada began to twiddle her fingers together and said, and Naruto-kun I've ll loved you since you and me were little, why you see that's why I believe in you, Hanada looked away blushing nervously afraid of how he would react, Naruto was left affirmatively speechless as it felt to him like his brain shut down and he was left purely with only emotion and instinct. Someone actually cared for him, more than just his existence she wanted his love and acceptance in return, Naruto couldn't think of anything more he needed at that particular than what was right in front of him. In fact she had always been there he was just too blind to see it. Naruto stood up and began walking toward Hinata and pulled her into a deep passionate kiss, Hinata was breathless and felt like she was floating, 
she felt as if she fell asleep and was having another one of her fantasy dreams of her Naruto-kun, but she was awake so to her it could only mean one thing, it was a dream come true, Hanada whispered those words to herself with a very happy smile. Hanada was lying down in her bed blushing and smiling to herself thinking about her night with Naruto, they were kissing for hours then he invited her to his apartment where they embraced and kissed for hours into the night, and after it had gotten late he chatted with her as he walked her home, he was holding her hand the whole way there which Hanada absolutely loved, she lied down replaying the day in her head over and over again as she slowly drifted off to sleep. Whispering to herself, Am my Naruto-kun? Naruto woke up as he sneezed really hard and yawned as he took some medicine for this headache he had, he went into the bathroom and undressed, then he slipped into the shower and turned the hot water on, he stood there and let the hot water run over his sore body as he blushed when he thought about the dream he had woken up. From, in his dream his innocent pearl-eyed angel was in a nurse outfit and was on top of him trying to seduce him, and after an internal struggle within himself, she succeeded, he turned the hot water on a higher temperature causing all his thought and feelings seemed to wash away, Naruto pulled on a pair of boxers and climbed back into bed hoping he would dream of Hinata-chan again. Naruto woke up that morning feeling a little disappointed that he couldn't remember any of his dreams but shook off the feeling as he remembered he could see Hinata again today. Naruto met Hinata at the corner where they bumped into each other and he immediately leaned in and kissed her, Naruto smiled and said, how about me and you get some ramen tonight here at 7? I have a few thing to take care of today, Hinata nodded and gave him a passionate kiss, see you tonight Naruto-kun, she was blushing hard as he disappeared. Naruto was walking down the street when he say Neji and Ten Ten talking, Naruto waved and said, hey guys how've you been? Ten Ten and Neji smiled and then Neji yelled, hey guys Naruto's back. Naruto smiled as he was greeted by Lee, Kakashi, Ten Ten and Neji, Sakura was there too and was standing behind Kakashi, apparent she thought I was mad at her he thought to himself. Hey guys miss me. Everyone had a smile on their face and Kakashi said. So Naruto I heard you got back the night before last, how come we haven't seen you since this morning? Naruto hesitated and said. I had a little bit on my mind, I was busy, Kakashi smiled and said. Tell Hanata I said congratulations. And with that being said Kakashi turned around and walked away. Naruto blushed as Kakashi walked away and everyone asked, what did you two do last night? Naruto was blushing bright pink and he said, we sort of got together. Everyone except Neji and Sakura was completely shocked, Neji merely smiled and Sakura was relieved he seemed really heartbroken and not himself when she turned him down, and what he said to her made her think about her feelings. So Naruto how did you guys get together? Neji asked curiously. Naruto thought for a second and replied. Well after some sleep and a sparring session with Lee I decided to get some ramen for lunch. I ran into Hinata as I took a sharp turn, as repayment I took her out for some ramen, after that I had a little chat with Sakura, I asked her out and she turned me down so I was feeling a little depressed, I went to my old team's training grounds and Hinata comforted me when I needed someone to be there for me and one thing led to another and before I knew it she was confessing her feeling for me, I really didn't know what to say so I kissed her. Neji smiled and thought to himself, so that's why Hinata came back so late last night. Tsunade was looking through some dusty old files with ease as she muttered a jutsu to herself which caused the dust to vanish, she found a safe with a seal on it that only a hokage could break, she spoke out loud seal release. And with a moment of silence the seal burned away and swung open revealing some files marked. Uzumaki clan, the Hokage was astonished that she couldn't touch for when she did her hand. Got burned, then letters appeared on the folder in flame, only those with blood of the Uzumaki clan may attempt to release the seal protecting our knowledge, the last of our bloodline is entitled to our secrets. Naruto spent most of his day sparring with Lee and Neji until at last he was defeated twice in a row, realizing he needed a break. Naruto, Lee, and Neji soaked in the baths after their sparring. Naruto seemed the most relaxed out of all of them, Lee broke the silence in the form of a question, so Naruto did anything unusually interesting happen to you during your four year training period? Neji leaned forward slightly in anxiety. Naruto gave Neji and Lee his classic goofy smile and said rather enthusiastically, you know it. Believe it, 
Well you see when me and him were in this tourist Wester Imports town and Jiraiya would leave me sometimes to conduct some of his, research. So I decided since he left I might as well take a look around so I checked it out. It was night time and a pretty big city with flashing light everywhere, and when I went into a few stores I found some really interesting things. Naruto began to look through his bag and pulled out a bunch of square-shaped cases made from hard plastic with titles and pictures on the fronts. Neji and Lee were astonished and opened some up as easily as opening a book and Lee looked up and said, What are these shiny discs Naruto? Naruto smiled and said, They're called CDs and somehow these discs make music when you put them in something called a CD player that ran off of something called electricity but I found I could power it with my chakra look. Naruto pulled out a square-shaped black box with speakers built into it. Neji and Lee were amazed when Naruto concentrated chakra on his forefinger and poked the box from behind causing a sound to appear in the background while a guitar and loud singing erupted from the small box. Wow! Neji and Lee said together and Naruto smiled and shut it off. Halting the series of noises as he slid the box and the CDs into his bag and got out of the bath, he dried himself and said, See you later guys I got a date with Hinata-chan. And Neji and Lee replied. Later, as Naruto got dressed and dashed out the door to meet up with. Hinata. Hinata was waiting patiently for him at their spot, as Naruto likes to call it anyway, the place where they ran into each other his first day here and took her out for ramen. Hinata giggled at the thought as she saw Naruto approaching her rather quickly from a distance. She smiled and waved at him as he got close and paused for a second to breath and said. I'm so sorry I'm late, Hanada merely reacted with a sweet, innocent smile and said, it's nice out tonight I don't mind. Naruto was relieved and they walked to Ichiraku's ramen stand but this time is more than friends. Hanada seemed really cheerful and was coming a little bit out of her shell so to speak as she squeezed Naruto's hand happily and hummed to herself which Naruto has never seen her do. Naruto smiled as her and Hinata took a walk to the old Team 7 training grounds and as Naruto lied on his back and leaned his head against the trunk of a big tree as Hinata lied down next to him, resting her head on Naruto's chest, Naruto kissed her neck and stroked her hair which was let out of her usual hair wrap thing where it was in a bun, she looked so beautiful I don't know why she doesn't have her hair. Like this all the time, Naruto smiled and said, we can't tell your father about us he wouldn't understand. Hanada nodded silently and Naruto continued, If your dad asks where you've been just tell him you were doing some training or taking a walk just whatever you do don't mention me in front of Hiyashi. Hanada nodded again and kissed his lips deeply, they both wanted the night to last forever, and to them it did. Naruto was walking down a long, dark corridor with carved stone runes in a language he couldn't read placed along the path he was walking, he approached the fox demon spirit seal and noticed it had gotten smaller. He looks inside and sees a mirrored form of himself with jet black hair, jet black skin and dressed in all black. Naruto is shocked and he yells, Who are you and where did the demon fox go? The dark form of Naruto snickered and said, You mean you don't know? Red and pitch black chakra began pouring out of him as he looked up and said ferociously, I am the one you call demon fox. Naruto wakes up with a jolt being very over-conscious of how hard his heart is pounding in his chest, was what he saw just a dream. No, he had visited his inner world like the first time he met the demon within him but what did the fox and his dark alter ego have to do with each other? And what was that black, sinister chakra he felt pouring out of him? It felt so evil, Naruto lied down trying to clear his head when at last he slowly drifted off to sleep. Naruto wakes up around noon the next day with a foggy head and feeling a little dazed as he gets up, takes a cold shower and makes himself a cup of hot chocolate to help wake himself up, he sipped on his hot chocolate as he ate his barbecue pork ramen slower than he usually did, about halfway into his breakfast Naruto hears a knock on his door, he sighs and starts walking toward the door to answer it, he opens it and comes face to face with Hinata. Hinata looked worried and said, Naruto I it's not like I'm complaining or anything it's just I thought we were going to meet at our spot this morning. Naruto looked surprised and felt stupid for forgetting, then after a minute he said slowly, I'm sorry Hanada-chan I didn't get much sleep last night and I haven't been feeling well. Hanada pressed herself against him and pulled him into a deep embrace and said, just remember Naruto-kun that I will always be here for you. Naruto cried into her shoulder and held her tight as he said, 
Hanada Chan, you're so sweet, patient, and forgiving, I'm not worthy of a girl. Like you, Hanada merely smiled sweetly and stroked his hair as she said, Naruto, I love you, I always have and I always will, you have my word, Naruto kun, I will never leave your side. Naruto stopped crying, and for the first time in Hanada's life, she saw something on Naruto's face she's never seen before fear. Hanada looked into Naruto's eyes with a sense of urgency. Naruto what's wrong? Naruto slowly said. There's this darkness within me and last night it was awakened and somehow fused itself with the demon fox, and he looked just like a dark version of me, with black hair, eyes, skin, and demon red eyes. Then black and red chakra began pouring out of him. The red was the fox's chakra and the black chakra I couldn't recognize, it felt so evil and deadly I'm afraid if I try to use or suppress the fox's chakra something bad will happen, I'm afraid I might hurt you. Hanada was crying as we watched her Naruto-kun suffer and an idea popped into her head, she was probably the only person who could save him she thought. Come on we're going to see Tsunade, she's the fifth Hokage and probably the only one who can help you, she's our best bet. And Hanada took Naruto's hand and took him into Tsunade's office. Hanada led the way to Tsunade's office rather quickly as Hanada almost practically dragged him there he was so sick, they walked. Inside very suddenly yet Tsunade seemed like she was expecting us for some odd reason. Tsunade saw how weak Naruto looked, shocked she said, Naruto what happened? Naruto took a deep breath and explained to Tsunade what he had seen in his dream and Tsunade sat there with her eyes closed. Listening intently, after about six minutes of silence Tsunade finally spoke, Naruto I think you're old enough to know about your parents. Naruto was wide-eyed and he said, what about them? The only thing the third Hokage told me about my parents was they died around the time the nine-tailed fox demon attacked the village. Quote, Tsunade took a deep breath and said, well the thing is Naruto, the fourth Hokage was your father, his real name was Arashi Kazama. Tsunade paused for a second then continued. Your mother's name was Kari Uzumaki, she used to be head of the Anbu Black Ops at the time, and her and your father were so very deeply in love, when you were born your mother and father were so happy but later that day a crisis came up in the village, the nine-tailed fox demon was captured but the demon was beyond human knowledge and they couldn't control it, so it attacked the village. All ninjutsu zen. Weapons were useless against the great demon fox and many great ninja died that day. Your father and mother did the only thing they could think of to save the village, even if the cost was both there. Lives. Your father and mother performed a variation of the forbidden jutsu that summoned the god of death and sealed the demon. Inside of your body and gave up their lives to do it, that's all I know Naruto. Naruto absorbed all this information and was speechless, and suddenly a question popped into his head, but Tsunade what does? That have to do with my dream about my dark alter ego fusing with the nine-tailed fox demon. Tsunade frowned and said, Well you see Naruto you seem to have inherited a bloodline limit because you're the last of the Uzumaki clan's bloodline, and just as importantly your body has become strong enough to use it. Naruto felt as if his head was going to explode with questions, what was his bloodline power? If he even knew what it was would he be able to control it? Before he got a chance to have any of his questions answered Tsunade handed his what looked like a heavy book, it looked like a folder as thick as a novel with words printed in the front, the Uzumaki clan secrets. Below it was a very ancient looking seal that Naruto has never seen before, he reached to touch it and was rejected by a spark of concentrated chakra, then words were spelled out across the cover in a dark flame, Offer blood to prove connection to the Uzumaki bloodline and release the seal however you just have at least partially activated your blood limit in order to read the Uzumaki. Language and inherit our clan's secrets. The words vanished and Naruto was left with just more questions. Tsunade saw the confusion and frustration in Naruto's face and said, Listen Naruto this is a lot to take in all at once and you don't look too well either, go home and get some sleep, you could definitely use. It, Naruto was walking with Hinata home, and Hinata seemed more worried out of both of them, she was silent the whole time Naruto and Tsunade were talking and listening intently, when they got to Naruto's door she gave him a soft kiss on the lips and pulled him into a deep embrace, after a minute she pulled away and said, I hope you feel better Naruto-kun. Naruto hugged her and gave her a swift kiss on the lips and he goes inside his apartment and closed the door behind him collapsing on his bed and almost immediately passing out. 
Naruto was in his inner world again and once again was surrounded by strange runes in a language he doesn't understand placed along his path, he walks down an unfamiliar path thinking to himself, this isn't the way to the demon fox, then where was he going? Naruto strained his face in frustration. He kept walking down the long narrow path until it opened up into a dark chamber, he was in a circular room and placed along the walls around him were cages with what appeared to be clones of himself placed in each cage, in each cage there was a label of one of Naruto's emotions, love, kindness, sadness, anger, lust, guilt, fear, happiness, loneliness, and at last, darkness. Naruto began to feel the concentrated black chakra from earlier and the darkness clone smiled and said, it's good to finally meet you Naruto. Naruto was stunned and said very loudly, who are you? And where am I? The dark form of Naruto laughed very loud and said, you just don't get it Naruto, I am you, I'm a part of your ego and along with that fox demon you've got sealed inside of you I'm your greatest weapon. Naruto found himself speechless again but words began to escape from his mouth, so is there any side effects from using your chakra? The dark from of Naruto laughed and said, of course, the power is usually sealed away because if you can't control it then I get to have my turn. Naruto smiled and said, okay how do I release the seal? And how do I put it back up when I need to be in control of myself? The dark clone snickered and showed Naruto a long series of hand seals then near the end of it Naruto listened to his alter ego and cut himself and wrote a seal on his hand in blood, performed another hand sign and said, dark seal release. Naruto woke up in the middle of the night and felt what seemed to him like infinite power flowing through him, he got up and activated his chakra his usual blue chakra was mixing with the pitch black chakra making his chakra dark purple and three times its usual power, he closes his eyes and performed the jutsu he had learned in his dream but reversed the hand signs and said loudly, seal of darkness, and after he finished the jutsu the dark chakra receded into the seal on Naruto's stomach. Naruto smiled and said rather loudly, this power, I love it. Naruto woke up the next day feeling great, he was so happy of his newfound power that he couldn't stop thinking about it, as he took his shower and ate his breakfast he had nothing on his mind except what kind of things he could do with all this power, he took his last bite of chicken flavored ramen and grabbed his headband and put it on, he grabbed his backpack and filled it with ninja tools, gear, and weapons and swung it over his shoulder and walked toward the front door. As he opened his front door he saw Hanada standing on his front porch waiting for him, she looked relieved that he was feeling better and walked inside and gave him a hug, Naruto smiled and hugged her back and said, listen Hinata I have something to do today. As Naruto turned and started walking away Hinata grabbed a hold of his arm and said, how about dinner? Naruto seemed a little annoyed at her persistence and said, I'm sorry Hinata I can't maybe some other time. Hinata spaced out for a second as she watched Naruto walk away and thought to herself, is this really my Naruto-kun? The boy I fell in love with all those years ago, he seems like a completely different person. Naruto went to the park and saw Neji and Lee sparring, Naruto got excited and said, mind if I join in. Neji and Lee both stopped and turned their heads in Naruto's direction and smiled, Lee said, of course Naruto show us all you've got. Naruto smiled darkly and said, well if you insist, Naruto performed the 16 hand signs that his darkness ego showed him and said loudly dark seal release. What stood before Neji and Lee was a part of Naruto they never saw before, raw destructible power, Neji activated his Byakugan and was shocked at what he saw, from a seal on Naruto's stomach fire red, night black, and sky blue chakra were swirling together, terrifying increasing his chakra output off the charts. Naruto felt like he was invincible, what stood before him was merely a simple obstacle on his quest to achieve the greatest level of power and become Hokage. He leapt forward with terrifying speed and kicked Lee in the stomach and landed a punch on Neji's face simultaneously, knocking Neji back 15 feet. Neji and Lee got back up, Lee yelled, gate of life open, and gained a considerable amount of power but Naruto moved so fast not even Neji's Byakugan could keep up, he appeared behind them and said, what's wrong guys? Can't keep up, and a split second later he kicked Neji and Lee hard in the ribs. Neji's substitution jutsu vanished and gave him just enough time to throw three kunai knives at Naruto, who vanished into smoke Neji said, a shadow clone. 
When did he do that? But before he knew it he received a blow from his side which sent him flying into a tree. Naruto laughed darkly and performed another set of sixteen hand signs and said, Darkness seal jutsu. And when he finished all the power flowing through him receded into his seal. Naruto gave a big grin and said, How do you guys like my bloodline limit? Neji was shocked and thought to himself, All that raw destructible power was a bloodline limit. How could that be? I've never heard or seen such a dark power. Lee was speechless and thought to himself, Wow is this really Naruto? How did he obtain all of this power? Naruto smiled at their confusion and said, That's me at 80. Percent power believe it. Naruto was cut off but Kakashi appearing next to him. Kakashi coughed and said, Sorry to interrupt Naruto but Lady Tsunade would like a word with you. Hanada was in her room crying into her bed, she was crying into her pillow as she tried to think about something positive, but as she tried she couldn't stop thinking about how fast the romance between her and Naruto came and dried up just as quickly, the Naruto she knew and loved was away right now and she didn't know what to do to bring him back, the Naruto she knew was sweet, kind, courageous, loving and accepting, and the Naruto that was with her now was self-centered, detached, obsessed with his own power, and completely, Ignoring Hanada when she thought things were going great between them. Hanada found herself lonely and detached herself, she didn't feel like eating or doing anything for that matter and fell into a depression, she just lied down in her bed, face down with a face full of tears and crying herself to sleep, Naruto may have never physically harmed. Hanada but he gave her an emotional wound that no jutsu could ever cure. Naruto walked into Tsunade's office and leaned against the wall next to her desk with his arms folded across his chest and said, You called for me Tsunade. Tsunade smirked and said, Well it seems. Like you're feeling better Naruto, that's good because I have some training for you to do. Naruto snickered and said, Yeah right training, you really think I need more training. I've become stronger than you and Kakashi combined. Tsunade snapped back, Don't be so foolish you're a mere genin. Me and Kakashi both outrank you. Naruto argued back. Rank and power are two very different things you know it as much as I do Tsunade. Tsunade took a deep breath and calmed herself down even though Naruto had offended her, but he did have a fair point no one as far as we know has witnessed his power since he got back. Tsunade calmly and slowly said, All right Naruto if you can beat. Kakashi one on one then I will appoint you a chunin and if you lose you have to take training lessons for three months, got it. Naruto loved the idea of a challenge against his old sensei and said with a dark smile, just tell me the time and place, and I'll be there. Kakashi and Naruto met at Team 7's old training grounds and stared each other down, after a few minutes of silence Kakashi smirked and said, what's wrong Naruto I thought you would like to make the first move. Naruto smiled darkly and said, be careful what you ask for Kakashi sensei. And without a second's warning he performed sixteen separate hand signs and said, Forbidden Jutsu. Dark Seal Release. And with an explosion of fire red, sky blue, and night black chakra Naruto leapt forward so fast not even Kakashi could keep up, slamming his fist into Kakashi's stomach, knocking him hard into a tree, Kakashi got back up on his feet, put down his book, uncovered his Sharingan and said, Okay Naruto let's do this. Naruto concentrated and mixed his red chakra with his new black chakra and yelled, Shadow Clone Jutsu. About 10,000 Naruto clones appeared and the closest two had both their hands swirling a huge colored mass of chakra in his hand, a split second later he uses all his remaining clones to hold Kakashi down as Naruto appeared next to Kakashi and yelled, Rasengan. And with a colorful explosion of chakra Kakashi's shadow clone disappears into a puff of smoke, Kakashi appeared next to him a Split second later and kicked him hard in the gut and ribs which knocked Naruto into a tree and a minute later he spat up blood, a voice echoed in the back of his head, Damn Naruto you really suck at chakra control, you remember our little deal right. Now it's my turn. Naruto began muttering to himself, Please no. Let me try again I can control it. Then all of the sudden Naruto's face suddenly went blank, a long second later his face is replaced by rather emotionless expression. He began fluxing his muscles and muttered to himself, Hm this body is strong I could do some damage with this. Kakashi's face had an expression of confusion and he asked, Naruto are you alright? Naruto snickered and replied, 
Naruto went to sleep for a while, nice to meet you Kakashi. He paused for a second and a large mass of night black chakra poured out of him and he said, my name's Darkness. As he introduced himself Naruto's eyes glowed demon red. Kakashi was shocked and confused, was this the nine-tailed fox? No the chakra felt different, who was this darkness that was possessing Naruto, then it hit him. Kakashi asked, darkness huh, are you? Naruto's bloodline limit, darkness smiled darkly and replied, that's right and me and him have a contract you see, if Naruto is unable to finish the battle I get a turn at fighting in place of him. Kakashi nodded and said, very well I will give you my all. Kakashi performed a few hand signs and said, lightning blade. Darkness laughed darkly and said, this is going to be more fun than I thought. As soon as he said those words he concentrated a spiraling wave of the demon fox's chakra and his own night black chakra, forming an overwhelming ball of chakra and yelled, demon Rasengan. There was an explosion and a bright blue light, so bright you could see it from a mile away. The forest that they used as their battlefield all around in a 20-foot radius of them was vaporized to dust, Kakashi was covered in blood and unconscious in a crater in the ground and darkness was standing over him with a sinister smile on his face and laughing very darkly, a minute later darkness's face went blank and his fiery purple eyes changed back to their usual sky blue, he took a look all around him and his eyes widened in shock and he said, loudly, did I do all of this? Naruto's face lit up in fear when a pair of voices said in the back of his head, No Naruto, we did it. Naruto returned to the village an hour later with Kakashi slung over his shoulder, he was about to walk into Tsunade's office when the very last bit of his energy was drained and he collapsed at the door, darkness filled his vision and all he could hear were voices. Sakura. Oh my god. Kakashi. Naruto. Tsunade they're covered in blood. Tsunade. Sakura hurry up and get Naruto onto a stretcher. Get him to the hospital. Here I'll get Kakashi. Naruto thought for a minute that he lost his ability to hear because the only thing he heard for the longest while was a long airy silence. Light began to fill his vision again and he felt a warmth wrapped around him. He slowly opened his eyes and took a good look around. He was once again in Konoha Hospital. He was in a hospital bed in a set of medical patients' clothes. His clothes that he was wearing when he fought Kakashi were folded on his bedside table along with his leaf symbol headband neatly on top of the pile. He changed back into his clothes, had gotten up and was about to leave out the open window when he heard Sakura come in and say, Naruto you shouldn't be moving for at least another two days with all that damage, you were bruised up and bleeding pretty badly when we saw you, so just do me a favor and take it easy will you? Naruto made a fake overly cheerful smile and said, I'm fine Sakura believe it. Naruto couldn't get to sleep that night due to the face he had way too much on his mind. Regret, pain, power, were those truly the only thing he valued? I mean of course I need to obtain power in order to claim the title of the sixth Hokage but was the power of the darkness within him truly the answer? Naruto found himself falling into a depression, he had achieved great power, but at what cost? I scared the crap out of Lee and Neji and beat the crap out of them. I hurt Hinata the closest person I had to ever caring about me, what have I become? Naruto decided to give Tsunade a visit and just like last time she seemed to be expecting him, he walked inside and sat down in the chair and said, Hey Tsunade. Tsunade smiled and said, Hey Naruto congratulations on your victory over Kakashi but you did injure him and yourself rather badly. Naruto looked away and said, I lost Tsunade it wasn't me that defeated him, I lost control of my bloodline limits power and it took over my body, Naruto told Tsunade every detail of the dream he had, the possession, and the feeling of its power. Tsunade looked serious now and said, and you released the seal how many times? And you used a forbidden jutsu a being inside you taught you. What's wrong with you, were you that obsessed with power? After she was finished scolding him she took a deep breath and said, well at least you and Kakashi are still alive, just one more thing, I forbid you to ever use that jutsu ever again, do I make myself clear? Naruto sighed and said, all right Hokage-sama. Naruto was walking and decided to get some of Ichiraku's ramen, he leapt and found himself at a familiar stand, he sat down and said. Two bowls of pork ramen please. Ichiraku and Ayame smiled at their best customer and Naruto for some reason felt like he hasn't eaten anything that good in a while. 
Naruto found himself walking down a familiar path with runes along the path marked with warnings like, don't give in. And conquer the darkness within you. Naruto continued to walk and once again entered a large, dark circular chamber with cages lined along the walls with separate parts of his ego. Naruto was walking along and looking into all the cages when a familiar voice spoke. Hey Naruto long time no see. Naruto turned around and peered into the cage, inside was what appeared to be a clone of Naruto dressed in all red, Naruto was curious and asked, who are you? The red Naruto smiled joyfully and said, I'm the part of your ego that will do anything to protect my loved ones. I'm the will of fire. Naruto remembered what Uruka had told him about the will of fire when the third Hokage died, it was the need to protect your loved ones, and as Naruto remembered this he finally remembered what true power is. Naruto turned and asked, how do I release your power? The red Naruto smiled at him and said, you already have. And with those words his cage's bars fell off and he walked over to Naruto, they shook each other's hand and red Naruto said, it's good to be back Naruto. And with a jolt he wakes up in his bed again. Was that all a dream? No it felt too real, and after that night Naruto could remember what true power really is. Naruto woke up the next morning feeling great, he jumped out of bed, took a shower, and ate his ramen very quickly for the pace he had been at for a few days, he opened his door and breathed in the fresh air and smiled as the sunlight hit him and said, today's a new day. Believe it. Naruto took a stroll through the park and saw Neji and Lee sitting down under a tree and eating, Naruto approached them and sat down, they looked up probably thinking about last time they met. Naruto shrugged and said, listen guys I'm really sorry about the other day, this bloodline power is just too much, you see unlike the Uchiha clan and the Hyuga clan's bloodline limits mine is so powerful I need control over it before I can truly use it, I got more control over it now but there's a chance the seal could break in this darkness. Could ultimately devour me, and when that times comes I need to fight him and destroy the dark power before I can use my clan's true power. Neji and Lee both had their eyes closed and nodded in acknowledgement, listening intently to Naruto's story. They opened their eyes and said, Naruto it's alright you just need some more training in the use of your bloodline limit, come on I'll help you train. Naruto and Neji were training for hours, Naruto was unwilling to release his seal so it became a little difficult because he had become used to relying on its power, he closed his eyes and strained himself to draw out the fox's chakra, he yelled, Ura! And an explosion of fiery black chakra poured out of him, he had did it. Without breaking the seal he drew out the power of the nine-tailed demon fox in his darkness, he grinned happily and looked at Neji who activated his Byakugan and said, First lesson complete, you achieved the first level of control over your bloodline limit, tomorrow we will work on concentrating that power, lesson over Naruto come back tomorrow around noon ok. Neji smiled and walked away, Naruto watched him walk away and smiled to himself as he started his walk home and thought to himself. I'm glad I have friends I can count on, but can they count on me? Naruto was back in the land of waves, he was walking across the great Naruto bridge when all of the sudden mist clouded his vision, when he could see again he was in the forest, he got up and Haku smiled at him, Naruto grinned and Haku asked, do you have anyone that is precious to you? Naruto thought about the time he fought Mizuki and how he told him if he touched Aruka sensei he would kill him. Naruto smiled and said, yes I do why? Haku smiled and said, a person becomes truly strong when they have something they want to protect. Naruto woke up, opening his eyes slowly and taking a sip of water before laying back down, he remembered, he remembered the power that he had all along, to protect his loved ones were some of his most ferocious battles he had ever fought, and in all of them one thing was similar, he never gave up. He woke up the next day feeling a bit dazed, he took a big drink of water and get into the shower. He thought of Hanada while he was in the shower, he then thought back to how he had completely ignored her when for the last few days before that he was a bit excessively romantic, he frowned and thought to himself, maybe I'll ask Neji how she's doing if I get the chance. Naruto turned off the water and got out, he got dressed and made himself some barbecued flavored ramen, he ate his ramen and was out of the door, he gave himself a good run to the park to get his blood pumping. Neji was leaning against a tree with his eyes closed and patiently. Waiting for Naruto to arrive, Naruto runs up and says, Hey Neji sorry I'm late. Neji sighed and said, Don't worry about it Naruto. Naruto smiled and said, Okay let's start. 
Neji grinned. Over the next six hours Neji and Naruto worked on chakra control techniques, Naruto was feeling a bit tired. Neji smiled and said. Chakra control techniques completed, now on to step two, Naruto grinned and said. Alright Neji what's step two? Neji smiled and said. This is the most important part, I want you to try and concentrate all that chakra into your eyes. Naruto looked a bit confused and said. Alright if you say so, Ergish. Naruto could sense an evil feeling black and red chakra leaking out of their seals and into his eye sockets, he releases the pull and realizes he just created a chakra canal from his eye sockets to the rest of his body. He opens his eyes and they changed color completely, his eyes were dark purple with a bright red pupil and three red dots spinning around it, Naruto took a look around and felt like everything got slower. He looked up and saw everything around him moving in slow motion he realized he was moving regular speed and when he tried to say something to Neji he was moving in slow motion and didn't respond. Naruto cut off the chakra flow to his eyes and Neji looked at Naruto as if he were a ghost and said, Naruto where did you go? Naruto looked confused and said, I was just standing right here and when I opened my eyes everything was slower for some reason. Neji shook his head and thought to himself, he didn't even realize how fast he was moving, what an idiot. Naruto thought and remembered something. Hey Neji how has Hanada been lately? Neji wasn't expecting the question so he was caught off guard, he thought for a second and said. You know what, she's actually been very depressed lately maybe you could cheer her up. Naruto looked away and said. I'm probably the last person she wants to talk to right now. Neji seemed a bit concerned and asked. Did something happen between you guys? Naruto looked down and replied, Things were going really great and then I got this power and I stopped paying attention to her at all, she's so sad and I don't think she'll forgive me as easily as I would. Like, Neji smiled and said, Naruto, Hanada is the most forgiving person we know, just give her time she'll talk to you again. Naruto smiled and replied, You're right thanks Neji. Neji smiled and said, Lesson 2 complete Naruto. Go home and rest and meet me back here same time tomorrow, later. Neji walked off and Naruto headed the other direction to his house and thought to himself. I wonder how many powers I have in my eyes. Naruto smiled in excitement about the idea before heading home for another good night's sleep. Naruto was now walking through the old Team 7 training grounds. He felt a pain in his stomach. He lifted his shirt and a dark seal on his stomach was pouring out large amounts of black chakra. Naruto watched in horror as the seal shattered like a glass window and the darkness enveloped him and Naruto yelled, I need more power. Naruto's face went black and an expression of terror replaced it and he asked himself, D did I say that? Naruto walked over to a pole of water and splashed the cold water on his face, he looked down in shock and where his reflection would have been was Sasuke's face with his Sharingan activated and his dark mark released, he was just like Sasuke when he ran off to Orochimaru. He had shut down all his emotions and only sought power, he had even hurt the one closest to him when he obtained a power stronger than he could ever had imagined was hidden deep. Within him, he wakes up with a jolt with his face covered in sweat, he got out of his bed and went into his bathroom and splashed cold water on his face, he looked at the clock, it was only 6.52 am, ah well might as. Well get up I won't be able to get back to sleep, Naruto hopped in the shower and took a little longer than usual. He got out, got dressed, made his breakfast, got his ninja gear packed, ate his breakfast, swung his backpack over his shoulder and walked out the door, he took a long walk around Konoha trying to clear his head, he ends up in the park and he sees Lee kicking a tree, he waves and says, hey Lee want to spar with me. Lee turned around with a smile and replied, of course I will Naruto. I'm ready when you are. They were fighting on par for a good four hours before they decided to take a break. Lee and Naruto were eating some sandwiches and talking about interesting ninja technique they had seen during their missions, Neji came walking up and Naruto smiled and said, Hey Neji how's it going? Neji smiled back and said, You're actually early, well I guess there's a first for everything right? Naruto made a goofy grin and replied, You know it. Neji closed his eyes and activated his Byakugan and said to, Naruto, Okay Naruto I want you to draw chakra into your eyes again like last time, but this time I want you to not use as much chakra this time, got it? Naruto nodded excitingly and closed his eyes, he drew up his own chakra instead of borrowing darkness or Kyuubi's chakra and opened them, 
once again his eyes dark purple with red pupils in the middle, in each eye there were red dots circling his pupils Neji looked at his eye sockets with his Byakugan and was astonished at what he saw, Naruto's chakra in his eyes were warped and looked like it disappeared, then a minute later it returned with even more brightness, from what Neji could conclude from his analysis one of. Naruto's bloodline limit abilities is to slow down or speed up time in a barrier around him, making it a good technique for performing defensive and offensive maneuvers in battles. Neji looked at Naruto with an expression of curiosity and said, Lesson 3 is experimenting with your bloodline limits abilities. We need to see what you can do with those eyes of yours, you ready? Naruto grinned big and said, ready when you are. Neji grinned and said, all right exercise one start, you have to spar with me, begin. Neji and Lee were fighting on par, equally blocking each other's blows, Naruto noticed while he was fighting the power in his eyes. Gave him extraordinary balance and better paced reaction times at successfully blocking the moves I predicted and developing counter attacks in a moment's time. He blocked Neji's attack and successfully performed a counter attack, knocking Neji backwards and causing him to fall to one knee, Neji smiled and said, well Naruto it appears as you get some of the abilities Sharingan possesses, although the Sharingan still holds the ability to copy enemies techniques and abilities which you do not possess, try drawing out just a little more chakra into your eyes and we'll try again. Naruto closed his eyes and concentrated, only a little he thought to himself, Naruto felt a little leak in the nine-tailed fox's seal mixed. With a leak in the darkness seal, Causing his eyes red pupils to glow red, Naruto opened his eyes and Neji said, Ready. Begin. Naruto moved so fast from anyone else's view you might have thought he disappeared, him and Neji were moving so fast it was like flashes of light from one point to the other, Naruto punched Neji in the face, Neji dodged the second blow and lunged at Naruto and performed a taijutsu move which Naruto dodged as easily as taking a step to the right. He slammed his fist into Neji's face and performed a hand sign so fast that Neji couldn't make out what hand signs he was even using, he yelled, Earth style, great river of mud. The ground under Neji turned into a flowing river of mews and caught him in the current, he got his back slammed against a tree and Naruto pinned him down with a kanai to his throat and Neji smiled slyly and said, exercise completed. Neji and Naruto were facing each other again and Neji said, Okay Naruto this is your last exercise, I want you to concentrate as much chakra as you can into your eyes, ready. Naruto nodded and closed his eyes and he put his hands together and yelled, A-R-R-R-R-G-G-G-H-H-H-H. Dark and red chakra poured out of their seals and into Naruto's eyes and he felt a similar sensation he felt when he had first. Released the darkness seal, he felt invincible, he felt like he could do anything in the world. Being Hokage at that moment seemed like an easy task, he smiled and opened his eyes, the whites of his eyes were night black and the pupils and the dots twirling around the pupil were glowing blood red, he then turned to Neji and said, what now Neji? Neji smiled back and said, nothing Naruto you're done, you've gained mastery over your bloodline limit, let me explain, your bloodline limit has three levels, the first level was when you only had a little chakra concentrated in your eyes and you could easily adapt to changing battle conditions, the second level was when you had a steady amount of chakra in your eyes and you gained a considerable boost in power as well as speed, and the most powerful one, your third level allows you to warp the time and space within a barrier. With a 12 foot radius, allowing you to slow down your opponents and speed yourself up, giving yourself the upper hand in defensive or offensive situations. Naruto listened intently and said loudly, that's so awesome, I did it, yeah. Neji gave Naruto a high five and said, listen if you need any more help with your bloodline limit but just try and practice it at least one hour once a day okay? Naruto grinned and said, sure Neji no problem, hey listen would you tell Hanada I want to talk to her if she wants that is. Neji smiled and said, I'll see what I can do, take care Naruto. Naruto and Neji turned their backs to each other and both walked in opposite directions. Naruto got back to his house and felt like a hot shower after all that hard training, he closed and locked the door behind him, he went into his bathroom, undressed and hopped into his hot shower, the shower felt nice and he got out 20 minutes. Later feeling refreshed and tired, he made himself some beef ramen for dinner then went to sleep, and now that he got this power he wanted to be satisfied, he had the strange urge to show Hanada his power. Did he want Hanada's attention back that badly? 
he tried to not think about it as he slowly drifted off to sleep. Naruto was talking with Sakura and felt like his heart was crushed after she had turned him down, he was at the old Team 7 training grounds crying into his own lap, out of the blue a pair of beautiful oval white eyes pierced him and he said looked at her with tears in her eyes, she was crying hard and she threw herself into Naruto's arms and said, oh Naruto-kun, nobody should have to suffer that much. Everything else that night was blur to Naruto all he could remember was kissing her, that image replayed in his head over and over again before he finally woke up. He got out of bed and was rubbing his eyes as he thought to himself. I don't understand why can't I stop thinking about Hanada. It didn't make sense she had always been there so something felt out of place with her gone but he couldn't put his finger on it. He got out of bed a bit dazed this morning, taking a cold shower and eating some chicken flavored ramen, he was trying desperately to get Hanada out of his head but nothing seemed to work, he decided to take a job to clear his head, he began jogging through the village and worked his way through the forest, he found himself in the old Team 7 training grounds again. I know deja vu right? And he decides since his blood was already pumping he might as well train, he filled the pockets of his clothes with kanai, shuriken, and some of his favorite seals for his kanai, he had explosive seals, poison seals and paralysis seals, he took a few kanai out and practices his kanai throwing at the big tree, he threw them as close to each other as he could as if he were aiming at an invisible target, he ran up the tree and made some aggressive stabs where he was. Throwing his kanai, he landed on the ground and activated his bloodline limit, he immediately jumped up and concentrated a swirling ball of chakra in his hand and yelled, Rasengan. His attack left a hole in the middle of the trunk with a hole through every tree behind it, Naruto was amazed, he smiled and said, yeah I did it. He grinned and concentrated as much chakra as he could into his chakra canal behind his eyelids, he opened his eyes and began throwing kanai at the same spot again. Except this time his accuracy was so much better, it was as if his eyes could zoom in on the target and lock onto it. He deactivated his bloodline limit and smiled big, he felt so strong, he decided to take a walk into town to get some of Ichiraku's ramen for lunch to celebrate, little did he know a pearl-eyed girl was following him and watching his every move. Naruto was zooming through the trees to get back to town, he felt like he was floating, he was invincible, nothing could stop him from doing whatever he wanted, he landed in the middle of the path and strolled over to Ichiraku's ramen stand, he sat down and Ayame and Ichiraku both grinned and Ichiraku asked, so Naruto have you been training hard? I thought you just got back from your training with Jiraiya a few weeks ago. Naruto smiled and said, well that's true and I did get a lot stronger, but I still need to get stronger if I'm going to be Hokage someday right? Ichiraku grinned and laughed and said, that's the spirit, now order whatever you want Naruto, it's on the house. Naruto had a look of disbelief and replied, Really? Ichiraku nodded and said, Yes really. Naruto smiled and said, In that case, I want five bowls of your barbecue pork ramen, four bowls of your sweet and sour chicken ramen, and four bowls of your barbecue chicken ramen please. After a wonderful meal Naruto decided to go home and relax a bit before he goes out to train again, he opened his door and walked into his apartment, he sat down on his couch after closing and locking the door behind him. He put on one of his CDs that he got on his training trip with the pervy sage, he danced around in a rather goofy way, pretending to play the guitar and jumping up and down, dancing harder as the drum beat got faster paced. Then out of nowhere he heard a knock on the door, he paused and turned off the music and walked toward the door as he thought. Who could that be? He opened the door and a look of disbelief replaced his expression once again, he said slowly. H Hanada why or why you here? Hanada blushed and looked at the ground and said quietly, Well and Naruto-kun the thing is I I, I am missed you. Naruto had an expression of understanding and he said, I missed you too Hanada for some reason I couldn't get you out of my head. Hanada blushed harder and said, Are really Naruto-kun? Naruto smiled at her and said, Yes really Hanada I trained with Neji and I finally got to the point where I have a certain level of control over my bloodline limit and after I got all of this power the only thing I could think of was trying to impress you with it when I should have thought about my next step to being Hokage. Pretty silly huh? But before she even said anything Naruto had already got his answer, Hanada had thrown herself into his arms and pressed her lips against Naruto's deeply, he returned the kiss and held her against him and began stroking her long lavender hair, he kissed her neck and said, I missed you more than words can describe. Before he knew what he was doing he had brought Hanada inside, closed and locked his door, and was standing up and making out with Hanada, he backed up until he hit his couch and he sat down, 
she sat in his lap and straddled his as they kept making out deeply. And full of passion, they were rubbing and massaging the tips of their tongues against each other's as they ran their hands up and down each other's backs. Hanada pulled off Naruto's shirt and Naruto felt his brain shut down again. All that was left was emotion and instinct. He was kissing her faster, causing her to let cute little moans escape her mouth. Naruto had pinned her on his couch and was on top of her, French kissing her. Naruto began nibbling her ear and whispering romantic things in her ear as he pressed their bodies together. He felt a heat in between their bodies that he couldn't understand. He was kissing her neck up and down as he couldn't help but think. Man Hanada's body has developed so much since we were all genin. When he woke up again it was noon, Naruto looked at his clock and thought, man I overslept. Naruto got up and put his kettle on the stove and turned it on, he went into the bathroom and took a shower, after about 15 minutes he got out and his kettle was about to steam, he put it on a cool burner and made his barbecue pork ramen with a grin on his face as he ate his wonderful breakfast, he drank a big glass of milk and put it in the sink, he put on his headband, grabbed his backpack, and walked out the door. Naruto took a jog to get his blood pumping, he ran up the mountain and just sat on it, staring down onto the Hokage faces, his gaze drifted toward his father, father why would you seal not only one but two demons inside of me? Keeping the nine-tailed fox demon in check takes enough of his energy, the seal you gave me will keep me safe I know it but why? It didn't make sense to Naruto he just scrambled his thoughts, as he got up he sensed someone's presence, he immediately activates his Uzerigen and says, What is it Kakashi? Kakashi smiled with a curious look on his face and asked, How did you know I was here and not an enemy? Naruto grinned and said, Because first off I can sense your chakra from a mile away, secondly my Uzerigen far surpasses your Sharingan, you are not an Uchiha therefore you don't have the power to use the Sharingan to its fullest potential like Itachi or Sasuke. Kakashi grinned and said, Been doing our homework after all? Kakashi was silent for a second and asked, Naruto you know of the being called darkness inside you? Naruto nodded and Kakashi asked, What is he? Naruto sighed and said, He's my second demon that's sealed within me, and I'm sure you're familiar with the nine-tailed fox demon. What I'm truly afraid of is if they join together, they might be able to break and escape out of one of their seals. Kakashi closed his eyes and nodded in an acknowledgement and then spoke again. Naruto Tsunade would like a word with you and I believe Tsunade would like to know your discovery as well, goodbye. And with those words Kakashi vanished. Naruto knocked on Tsunade's office door waiting for her to let him in, she said after a minute, come in Naruto I've been expecting you. Naruto walked in and closed the door behind him, Hanada was in the corner and smiled at him sweetly, Naruto smiled back and turned to Tsunade, Tsunade smiled and said, are you curious to know what kind of training we're going to do? Naruto nodded and said, yeah I'm I've been training with the pervy sage for four years what am I missing in my training? Tsunade sighed and said, you have potential and a great power locked away inside of you but what you lack is discipline and control. Naruto stood there for a moment a spaced out, a moment later he nodded and said, okay I'm ready. Tsunade smirked and said, you better be. Tsunade winked and said, follow me. They walked outside and went down a few flight of stairs to a part of the Hokage house that Naruto had never been to before, he, Hanada and Tsunade entered a large circular chamber with torches lit in. Lined up against the walls, Naruto looked around and asked, Tsunade what is this place? Tsunade smiled and said, this is where the fourth Hokage trained personally and perfected the Rasengan. Naruto's eyes widened in excitement, he turned to Tsunade and said, alright what's the first assignment? Tsunade smiled and said, take off your shirt. Naruto acted as if he didn't hear her and said, excuse me. Tsunade laughed and said, what's wrong embarrassed? Naruto slid his shirt off and threw it on the ground and said, I'm not embarrassed or scared believe it. Tsunade pointed over to a stone bed with chains around it pinned down to the ground and said, lie down please. Naruto lied down on the bed and the pinned down chains suddenly sprung to life like snakes and wrapped around Naruto and the bed, bounding his body down. Naruto was shocked and said, what gives? She smiled darkly and said, I need to do some tampering with that seal on your stomach and I can't have you moving around. Naruto replied, what are you going to do to my seal? Tsunade smirked and said, you'll see now just sit back and relax, Tsunade performed a few hand signs and said, medical jutsu. Sleeping mist. 
and with a burst of chakra a mist sprays Naruto in the face causing him to black out. Naruto was walking down a dark corridor again, knowing this path. Instantly as the way to the demon fox, Naruto walks up to his cage and the fox smiled darkly and says, Well, well back for more power are we? Naruto smiled and said, Teach me demon style jutsus. The fox smirked and said very well my knowledge is yours, and with a flash of light Naruto learned quite a few new jutsu, all he had to do was think about them and every detail of the jutsus were there, there. Names. How much chakra they consume, what they do, what type of situations they're used for, and everything else he could possibly want to know about them, he smiled at his new knowledge and felt a bright light fill his eyes along with Tsunade and Hanada's voice. Naruto are you alright? Naruto slowly opened his eyes to see he was now on the ground sitting up, Tsunade and Hanada looked relieved and Tsunade said, when I released that jutsu on you I thought you were in a trance, you were mumbling and moving around. Naruto rubbed his eyes and said, sorry about that I had a weird dream. Naruto slowly got up and asked Tsunade, how is my seal? Tsunade frowned and said, well I did the best I could, I fixed it up as much as I could but it's still cracking, if you ever released the seal again you would become more powerful than any ninja but the cost would be this demon inside you being released and devouring you and your enormous supply of chakra. Naruto's eyes widened in fear and he nodded to motion that he understood. Tsunade continued, your training with Neji gave you basic control over your new bloodline limit the Uzaragan, but according to Neji still have only obtained about a third of its true powers, we are going to be doing chakra control exercises. Naruto said, what do I do? Tsunade smiled and said, your chakra pours out of you too easily, we need to control concentrating all that chakra inside you so none of it goes to waste, Naruto you have an enormous supply of chakra and you could use that to your advantage. Tsunade continued, we will be focusing on sealing up these chakra leaks in your body, now start gathering chakra. Naruto closed his eyes and yelled, R, blue, red, and black chakra began swirling around him like a vortex, at certain points there were holes where the chakra leaked out, Tsunade examined and said, see it's just how I said now keep your chakra powered up and close your eyes. As Naruto closed his eyes and maintained his chakra level, Tsunade whispered to the corner of the room. Okay Hanada now I want you to use your Byakugan and use your gentle fist taijutsu to seal up his chakra leaks can you do that for me? Hanada nodded and activated her Byakugan, she gently applied quick blows to his chakra canals, sealing up the leaks and increasing the chakra flow rate, Naruto closed his eyes and felt all of his chakra concentrating inside of him, he opened his eyes and activated his Uzaragan which caused an explosion of black, red, and blue chakra mixing together and forming a dark purple chakra with black chakra swirling around it. Tsunade said, exercise one complete Naruto maybe you should get home and get some sleep? Naruto nodded and grabbed Hanada's hand and said, come on Hanada let's go. Naruto and Hanada made their way out of Tsunade's office and were walking to Naruto's house, after a minute Hanada blushed and asked shyly, I thought our date was the night after tomorrow? Naruto smiled and said, I know but I couldn't wait want to come in? Hanada nodded and Naruto opened the door to his apartment, Hanada and Naruto walked inside and Naruto closed and locked the door behind him, Hanada sat down on Naruto's couch and he sat down. Next to her a second later, he smiled and climbed on top of her and leaned in for a kiss, Hanada smiled and pressed her lips deeply into his, sliding her tongue into Naruto's mouth, Naruto massaged her tongue with his and made out with Hanada. They kissed like this for what felt like hours, and unfortunately they did. Naruto looked at the clock when their passion had finally burned down, it was 2.21 am, damn when did it get so late? Naruto nudged Hanada awake who had barely fallen asleep on his couch, she smiled and asked, what is it Naruto-kun? Naruto frowned and said, I think we're late bringing you home Hanada. Hanada smiled and said teasingly, come on let me spend the night you know you want to. Naruto blushed and said, you're right Hanada but I don't think your dad would like it very much. Hanada thought about it, he was right and she knew it. Naruto took her hand and said, come on Hanada I'll walk you home. Naruto woke up that morning, he felt like he had a good dream but he couldn't remember it no matter how hard he tried, Tsunade didn't give him a time to come back the next day so he assumed she would fetch someone to get him when he was needed. He did his usual morning routine except with some barbecue chicken flavored ramen this time, he decided today he was going to do some training of his own, 
he took a run and went back to the old seven training grounds and faced the familiar big tree, he smiled and said to himself. Let's see the improvement of one lesson's worth of training with Tsunade. Naruto closed his eyes and concentrated as much chakra as he could into his body, he felt more balanced and faster, Hanada had truly done magnificent work with his chakra flow, before felt like surges of power, now he could feel the chakra flowing through him. Like water flows through a river, he disappeared and threw countless kanai knives at the tree all at once in the same spot, they made synchronized and all hit the tree, forming the abstract shape of a human body, Naruto grinned and said, I've never been this good at kanai throwing, but now it's like I can zoom in on my target and fire. Naruto grinned and began to eat his lunch he packed for himself, he finished eating and felt proud he had made such wonderful noodles, he stood up and was walking back toward the village when he heard movement from behind him, he turned and reacted immediately by throwing a kanai which hit and stopped the kanai his opponent had just thrown at him. A ninja Naruto had never seen before was standing before him, he had spiky red hair, bright red eyes, and wore the Ansuki uniform, a black robe with red clouds decorating it, he stared at Naruto for a second and said, Naruto I have been ordered to capture you, now come along quietly or I will have no choice but to bring you in by force. Naruto smirked and said, like I'll ever give up, bring it on. The red-haired Akatsuki member nodded and said, very well. He performed a few quick hand signs and said, fire style, armor of flame jutsu, and a great flame enveloped his body in the shape of a suit of armor. A sword of flame extended from his hand and he powered up his chakra and said, Okay let's do this. And with a split second later he charged at Naruto, Naruto disappeared and appeared over him and closed his eyes and did something to his explosive seals, he said silently, water style. Crystal ice seal jutsu. He threw kanai from all directions with the tags in place, the Akatsuki member dodged them but they turned around almost as if they were closing in on him and hit him in the back. There was an icy explosion and the ninja that was enveloped in flame was now frozen in solid ice. Naruto appeared in front of him and threw three kanai through the block of ice and through his chest. He smiled darkly and walked away as he said to himself, pathetic. Just as he was about to leave he grabbed a kanai with an explosive seal and threw it at the block of ice causing the ice and his body to shatter into pieces. When the battle ended Naruto disappeared and made his was to Tsunade's office, when he finally got there he knocked on the door and said, Tsunade let me in this is urgent. Tsunade opened the door and asked. What is it Naruto? Naruto replied. I was just attacked by another member of the Akatsuki. Thanks to my training I defeated him with ease but what has me worried is how he got into the village in the first place. Tsunade looked shocked and said. Thanks for coming directly to me Naruto. Due to this new update I have no choice to assign someone to be your escort. Naruto blurted out. I'm strong I don't need anyone to babysit me. Tsunade smiled and said, Are you sure? Don't you want to see who I've assigned to you first? Naruto sighed and said, All right if you must. Tsunade winked and said, Come in Hanada. Naruto turned his head in surprise, standing in the doorway was his innocent angel, she smiled at him and Tsunade said, I know how close you are so I know you'll do well to protect each other with your lives, can I count on that? Naruto and Hanada smiled at each other and both said, We'll protect each other with our lives. Tsunade smiled and said. Good, now I want you to go back home Naruto and don't forget to come back before it gets dark to continue your training, and Hanada? Hanada looked up and said, yes? Tsunade then said. I want you to be on guard duty and be with Naruto wherever he goes, you got it. Hanada blushed and said sure. She smiled and thought to herself. I've been following Naruto for years and now I've been assigned to do just that. Her and Naruto were walking back to his house and Hanada asked. So Naruto was that fight with the Akatsuki member a hard one? Naruto made a grin and said. With my Uzaragan it was a piece of cake believe it. Hanada smiled and thought. That's my Naruto-kun. Naruto grinned at her and said. So my angel would you like to escort me to my bedroom? Hanada gave a seductive look, winked and replied. Of course my Naruto-kun just lead the way. After about 40 minutes Hanada says. Man how long does his showers take? Hanada got up and walked into the bathroom and said, Naruto-kun what is taking you so long? Naruto answered seductively. Took you long enough I was just about to get out, how about you join me? Hanada blushed and said, Be but Naruto-kun, it's too early for you and me too. Naruto smiled and said teasingly. Come on you know you want to. Hanada blushed hard and bit down on her lip. 
It was so very tempting but she still needed to be on guard and when they were together now their passion kept them unfocused on the task at hand and too focused on each other. Not that she didn't like it. Hanada blushed and said, Naruto I love it as much as you do but we need to keep focused if you really are attacked by the Akatsuki. Naruto sighed and got out of the shower and got dressed and turned to Hanada and kissed her lips deeply, pulling her into a passionate kiss. A minute later he breaks the kiss and says, Thanks Hanada I. Just get so turned on by you please forgive me if the temptation was just too much. Hanada blushed and said, W well let's just try and not do it too much, I mean kissing's fun too. Naruto smiled at her and said, If you say so but I can tell with the look on your face that you like the sex even more than I do. Hanada blushed and looked away and said, I I don't know what why you mean. Naruto grinned and kissed her neck as he whispered in her ear, It's okay Hanada you can relax I'm not going to share your secret with anyone. He smiled and walked away leaving Hanada standing there like a statue. Naruto called after her and she came out of the bathroom with her face flushed and she sat down and Naruto grinned at her and said, You alright? Hanada blushed and nodded. Naruto smiled and said. Good, so Hanada did you get a good night's sleep last night? Hanada grinned and said. After last night I fell asleep like a baby. Naruto grinned seductively and said. Is that so? As he leaned in and kissed her. She replied by pressing her lips to his and sliding her tongue in his mouth. Naruto began rubbing the tip of his tongue against hers as he climbed on top of her. Naruto pressed his body into hers as he kissed her deeply and passionately, closing his eyes as he kisses her over and over again. After a few minutes of this they were interrupted by a knock on the door. Naruto walked over and opened the door. Kakashi stood in the doorway and waved his hand as he said, Naruto, Hanada, Tsunade would like to have a word with you too. Naruto looked at Hanada and they both nodded. They set off to Tsunade's place together, going through the quickest route to get there. They were at the front door of the building and they opened the door and entered, the walk down. A hallway until they were in front of the Hokage's office, they knocked on the door and heard Tsunade's voice say, come in. Naruto and Hanada walked inside and closed the door behind them. Naruto looked at Tsunade and said, so what's up? Tsunade smiled and said, I have a special mission for you too. Naruto's eyes widened in excitement and he asked, What kind of mission is it Tsunade? Tsunade looked down, closed her eyes, sighed, and said, Naruto, Hanada, your mission is to collect as much information as you can on the Akatsuki and rally up with Jiraiya in a place called Zenzaku Town. Naruto smiled and asked curiously, Where is this Zenzaku Town? Tsunade unfolded a map and marked an A point and a B point. The A point was their starting point the Hidden Leaf Village and their B point was their destination, Zenzaku Town. Tsunade folded the map back up and handed it to Hanada. She smiled and turned to Naruto and says, You and Hanada are assigned to leave the village tomorrow morning. Oh and Naruto don't forget to grab your clan's book I'm sure you could find it useful in your mastery of the Uzerigan, Owen. Naruto. Good luck. Naruto nodded to gesture he understood and walked out Tsunade's office door with Hanada. They began walking toward Naruto's house and after a minute of silence Naruto said, so Hanada how have you been? Hanada giggled with a blush on her face and said, I'm fine Naruto-kun why do you ask? Naruto grinned slyly and said, just curious. As he finished these words a mischievous smile went across his face, a moment later something important struck Hanada, she had forgot to go home and pack. Hanada blushed as she remembered and said to Naruto, oh Naruto I just remembered I need to go home and pack, but I promise I'll meet you back at your house tonight okay? And with those words and a swift kiss on the lips Hanada ran back in the direction of the Hyuga estate. Naruto was a little disappointed but at the same time it gave him some time to follow Tsunade's advice and take another read in his clan's seal book. He walked into his apartment and closed the door behind him. Leaving it unlocked for Hanada, he walks into his bedroom and pulls his clan's book out from under the bed, he opened the book and. Instead of a holographic language the book just became plain text. Uzumaki clan, the seal masters. The Uzumaki clan was famous for their seal forming and seal release techniques. Their seal making techniques were performed with lightning speed hand signs that not even the more famous clans the Uchihas or Hyugas could ever hope to copy or master. Their most famous seal was the Forbidden Jutsu Demon Seal, which is a technique whose successor was the Reaper Seal Jutsu perfected by the third Hokage of the village hidden in the leaves. The information took a minute to absorb then something important struck him. The dark seal release that he learned from his shadow demon was one of the seal release techniques his clan was famous for. 
That was why he could do it as easy if he's been doing it for years. After a minute of thought she continued to read, he read chapters and chapters of charts that displayed different seal and seal release jutsus, he activated his uzaragan on reflex and felt like his bloodline limit took a picture of the seals on the book, he gained all the knowledge of his clan without even training, now all he needed to do was train to use it to his advantage. He read and memorized with his bloodline limit chapters and chapters of nothing but seal jutsus and seal release jutsus, after he was about halfway into the jutsu index he felt like he was going to collapse, he deactivated his uzaragan immediately as he sighed and said, I guess my uzaragan took a toll on even my chakra level when I memorized those jutsus. He smiled and activated the nine-tailed fox's chakra and with lightning speed of flipping the pages and memorizing countless jutsu that could be very important to him with his training of the mastery of the uzaragan. He slid his book into his backpack as he filled it with the necessities for their mission. Food, ramen, water, map, ninja weapons, all his konoha seals for his weapons, matches, medicine and a sleeping roll for when they went camping. He took a long shower then lied down on his bed and rested, there was so much on his mind he almost forgot Hinata was going to come over later. Naruto closed his eyes and lied his head against his rather comfortable pillow and started to drift off, 15 to 20 minutes later he heard the door open and close, he didn't become alert and active because he immediately sensed her chakra, if she were an enemy or imposter they couldn't copy the feel of Hinata's gentle life force that was one of the qualities about her Naruto adored. He was half asleep when Hinata slid into bed with him and wrapped her arms around him and whispers. I missed you Naruto-kun, Naruto grinned and said, you were only gone for a few hours. Hinata blushed and pouted as she said, I know I just like to be with you. Naruto smiled and gave her a deep passionate kiss as he held her and said, I know exactly how you feel Hinata I feel the same way when I'm with you. I feel lighter, happier, like I can truly be myself around you, like I can do anything in the world. I know it sounds silly be you, but he was cut off by Hanada hugging him hard, after a minute she finally spoke. That's not silly at all Naruto-kun, with Hanada by his side and the knowledge of his clan on him he felt safe and reassured about the mission ahead, but all of that and more couldn't have prepared him for what lies ahead of him. Naruto and Hanada woke up and got ready rather quickly because they had packed everything the other night, after taking long shower together they got dressed and grabbed their things, they walked out of Naruto's apartment and began walking toward the village gate. When they heard some movement, they turned around and came face to face with Neji. Neji smiled and said, Hey there guys Tsunade ordered me to escort you guys on your mission. Naruto and Hanada smiled and Naruto said, It'd be great to have you with us Neji, not one but two Byakugans would be very useful on our mission seeing as how we have to collect as much information on the Akatsuki on the way to Zenzaku town which is our rendezvous point where we're supposed to meet up with the pervy sage. Hanada giggled at the nickname and Naruto smiled and said, all right to Zenzaku town, Hanada and Neji made eye contact and nodded to each other as they began following Naruto towards the village gate. The guards at the gate opened the gate for the team and said as they were about to close it, good luck on your mission you guys, take care. And with those words the village gate was shut closed behind them, they all took a look at the map that Tsunade had handed Naruto and began heading west through the Konoha forest. Naruto, Neji and Hanada raced through the trees feeling a rush of air as they leapt from tree to tree, every couple of hours Naruto had Hanada and Neji use their Byakugan to see if any enemies are in front or behind them, having Hanada and Neji do this back to back in order to cover each other's blind spots, and to see if they were going the right direction. After many hours of this routine the sun went down and darkness enveloped the sky, they decided to take it safe in case of enemy attack and camp down for the night, all three of them caught some fish for them to cook over the fire for dinner, after eating Hanada and Naruto feel asleep in each other's arms in Naruto's sleeping bag. Neji kept watch while they slept and after four hours he woke up Hanada to keep watch until morning so he could get some sleep as well. When they woke up they packed up their things and rushed through the trees again, after a few more hours of travel the forest ended and opened up into a wide canyon, Neji and Hanada activated their Byakugans and scanned the areas to their left and right just to be safe as they walked through the canyon. After about an hour or so of walking into the canyon they saw a town come into view in the distance. They approached the town and found it completely empty of all life as far as they could tell, not a single person was visible among some old western building falling apart and some in ruins, they kept walking and ignored the ghost town, as they were about to leave 20 kanai knives flew at them from all directions, 
Naruto activated his Uzaragan and deflected every kanai with his own kanai and closed his eyes and performed a long series of hand signs lightning fast in a time span of 7 seconds and said, demon style. Shadow Pursuit Jutsu. An orb of darkness appeared and split up into three parts, the three parts went into three separate directions and hovered over each individual enemy's head as a cursor with a traceable dark chakra. Naruto, Hanada, and Neji went after each of the enemies and fought one on one. Naruto confronted the first enemy, who had red spiky hair, red eyes, and wore one of the Akatsuki black robes with the decorated red clouds. Naruto smirked and said, What do you and your Akatsuki members want with us? The red haired ninja laughed and said, Them? No, all we are after is your demon, Naruto Uzumaki. You are ordered to come with us. Unless you want to see your friend's corpses, to let's just say, persuade you. Naruto gritted his teeth and clenched his fists as he opened his eyes. His Uzaragan was glowing bright red with the demon fox's energy pouring out of him, and he said, You're going to pay for that. With a burst of demonic red chakra and lightning fast movements, he rushed into a burst of speed and performed a quick hand sign and said, Shadow clone jutsu. About 500 clones of Naruto appeared and rushed toward the enemy while one clone and Naruto each performed a Rasengan and put it together in a destructive night black and blood red chakra and Naruto yelled, Tendo Rasengan. With a large explosion Naruto saw his body being burned up but a second later it disappears in a puff of smoke as he performed a substitution jutsu, Naruto lost sight of them, a moment later Hanada and Neji appear next to Naruto and Neji says, they got away. Naruto nodded and said, Yes they did but let's just focus on our mission and keep our guard up because remember they're after me so next time let's fight them as a group not one on one agreed? Hanada and Neji nodded and the three of them continued in the direction on Zenzaku town at a remarkable pace as the sun started to set. They were all running alongside each other and running down a long dirt road, about another hour of distance and they approached a fork in the road, one sign said, Earth Valley, and the other sign said, Zenzaku town. They followed the sign east towards Zenzaku town to report to Jiraiya what had just happened to them. They had hiked over a series of hills over a time span of five hours, they got to the top of the last hill and were amazed at what they saw, it was a huge city with countless glowing lights and spotlights, it looked like a completely electric city, they climbed down the path and made their way into Zenzaku town, from left to right in every direction there were shops with many things of all sorts, how am I? Going to find Jiraiya in this whole big city? Naruto turned to Neji and Hanada and asked, Can you two try and find him with your Byakugans? I'm going to try and trace his chakra. He closed his eyes for a second, concentrated as much chakra as he could into his chakra canal behind his eyes, opened them and activated his Uzaragan. He scanned the entire city and a trail of chakra led through the city. Naruto signaled to Hanada and Neji to follow as he followed the familiar trail of chakra. It led up to an escort service and Naruto opened the door and said, Hey pervy sage you in here? Jiraiya looked up drunkenly and said, Hey Naruto what are you doing here? Naruto sighed and handed a letter to him. He opened it and read it, after a minute he sighed and said, I'm sorry girls I have some business to attend to. The girls giggled and said, Come back soon. Naruto, Neji, Hanada, and Jiraiya all walked outside and after a 15 minute trip they walked into Jiraiya's hotel room. Jiraiya drank a glass of water and said, You are all welcome to spend the night here we will have our discussion tomorrow. Good night. And with those words he fell face first on his bed and passed out in a fit of snoring. Naruto, Jiraiya, Neji, and Hanada were in a circle having a conversation. After a minute of a casual discussion their faces wore an expression of seriousness as Naruto's voice willed with curiosity and he asked, Jiraiya did you find any information on Akatsuki's operations or whereabouts? Jiraiya looked down and shook his head and said, Unfortunately I haven't come across any information the reason I haven't come back was I just needed a little break for my research. Naruto snickered and said, Research, that's what they called it in your day huh? Jiraiya locked gazes with him and said, How dare you mock my research? Naruto sighed and said, Alright I'm sorry but did you find at least something this whole time? Jiraiya's face darkened and he said, It's Orochimaru he's on the move again. Naruto, Neji, and Hanada's face all lit up in fear, Naruto said. What is he doing? Jiraiya looked up and responded, he's going to other worlds in order to obtain weapons of great power with a forbidden jutsu that opens a gate to another realm. Naruto had a look of curiosity, shock and confusion as he asked, another realm? What's that? Jiraiya sighed and said, 
Some things never change about you Naruto, a realm is in theory another world. Naruto felt a mixture of excitement and terror at the same time when he thought about what kind of weapons and powers he could gain in. New worlds and by weapons does he mean containers of great power like him or an object of great power. Neji, Naruto, and Hanada all exchanged looks and nodded and Naruto said, We have to inform Tsunade immediately. Jiraiya closed his eyes and crossed his arms as he said, I agree but we don't have time to return to the Hidden Leaf Village personally I'll just send a messenger. Jiraiya performed a quick set of hand signs and said, Summoning Jutsu, a three-foot red toad appeared and said, Hey! Boss man what's up? Jiraiya handed him a letter and said, I want you to go to the Hidden Leaf Village and deliver this letter to the fifth Hokage. The toad nodded in acknowledgement and said, Can do boss, and with those words he disappeared into thin air. Naruto looked at Jiraiya and said, Do you know what this gate is called and where it is for that matter? Jiraiya looked at him for a second and responded, It's called the Celestial Gate and yes I have recently received some information from a reliable source that tells me the location of the Gate of the Heavens they called it, it's located in the Valley of Time which is about a couple hundred miles north of here, the trip could take up to a week so make sure to stock up on plenty of supplies got it? Everyone nodded and Jiraiya said, Great, say Naruto how about you and Hanada go stock up on our supplies for us? Naruto sighed and said, Fine come on Hanada. Hanada blushes and said, Coming Naruto-kun, they walked down the street and began searching for a store to stock up on food, water, and medicine. After about one or two hours of searching they found a grocery store, they walked in and bought plenty of food, bottled water, and a variety of medicine, they walked out satisfied and began to walk back to Jiraiya's apartment, as they were walking Naruto said, Wow it took quite a while to find that grocery store, things are hard to find in this city aren't they? Hanada nodded and giggled as she said, they sure are. Naruto smiled and opened the door to the hotel, they walked into a machine called an elevator and pressed the button for the fourth floor where Jiraiya's apartment was, a minute later the doors opened and Naruto walked to the door of his hotel and opened it, he pulled his backpack off and showed them all the supplies he bought, Jiraiya smiled and began packing up all his things in the room and said. That looks like everything we need so let's set off. After Jiraiya finished packing Naruto, Jiraiya, Hanada, and Neji walked out the hotel door and took the elevator down to the main lobby, Jiraiya checked out at the front desk really quick and they walked outside, Naruto pulled out his map and Jiraiya marked their destination on the map with a black marker, Naruto rolled it up and stashed it and began walking with Hanada and everyone else toward the northern exit. When Naruto and Hanada woke up they gave each other a kiss and dressed, they packed all their things and took down the tent and folded it into its case, they handed it to Neji and continued there. Journey North Naruto and Hanada held and gently squeezed each other's hand as they walked. The sky was clear that day and it was sunny, Naruto couldn't see one cloud in the sky and it felt to him like it was going to be a good day. They walked for hours on a dirt road running along a river to the left of them and dense forest to the right, they thought this seemed like an ideal place for an ambush for enemy attacks and Neji activated his Byakugan and kept rotating his head to cover his weak point. They kept walking on that for about two hours until out of nowhere Itachi and Kisame appeared and said. Naruto you are to come with us. Naruto snickered and said. Yeah right like I'm going anywhere with you. He activated his Uzerigan and concentrated as much chakra as he could into the chakra canal behind his eyes. He opened his eyes slowly revealing fiery black eyes with a glowing red pupil in the middle and three fiery purple pupils rotating around his eyes. Itachi's normal emotionless expression had a rare shift to that of curiosity and surprise, he made a dark smile and said, I see a bloodline limit how interesting, Kisame he's mine got it. You can have your pick of the others. Kisame sighed and said, very well which of you weaklings will I have the pleasure of grinding into dust. Neji smiled and said, try me I'm no weakling. Kisame smiled in sinister pleasure and said, it would be pleasure kid. Jiraiya appeared in front of Neji and said, Neji back off he's mine. Neji looked confused and smirked and said. I see he insulted your pride. Very well go ahead. Jiraiya smirked and said. Prepare to feel the power of the mighty toad sage. Naruto lunged at Itachi with all of his might with a kanai in his grip and aimed it at Itachi's throat. Itachi dodged and threw three kanai at him which Naruto. Deflected with ease with the kanai he was holding. Itachi smirked and said. It looks like you've improved since you tried to fight me last very well give me all you got Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto smiled darkly and said, you're going to regret saying those words you have no idea at the levels of power I have obtained. 
Don't underestimate me. Naruto closed his eyes and went into his inner world and visited the fox's cage, he looked inside and said. Give me power fox. A figure inside smirked and said, Very well I will give it to you. A blast of fiery black chakra filled his body and he said in shock, What's wrong with your chakra demon fox? The figure in the cage smirked and said, Don't tell me you forgot me already last of the Uzumaki clan. Naruto's eyes widened in shock and he said, Impossible. Darkness smirked and said, Very. Possible look the my seals already cracking. Naruto looked down at his stomach in terror. The darkness seal that just appeared on his stomach was slowly fading away until there was a dark circle, for a minute there was nothing then all of the sudden Naruto felt as if his stomach was being ripped open from the inside and a dark fog entered his body through his nose, mouth, and eyes. Naruto screamed in a dark sphere of some kind of raw energy that was completely different than chakra. Itachi tried to touch it and his hand felt a sharp pain and he said, What the hell is this Naruto Uzumaki? A special defense? There was no answer and he turned to Neji and said, Very well prepare yourself Hyuga. Naruto was drifting in his inner world like he was floating through an ocean of his memories and essentially everything about his life was all around him, darkness filled his eyes and he couldn't remember where he was or how he had gotten there then it hit him, he was fighting Itachi, if that was the case why was he here? His head hurt and his thoughts scrambled when he couldn't remember, darkness laughed and said, Are you finally awake Uzumaki Naruto? Naruto? turned around and anger filled him as he pointed his finger and said, You, why did you bring me here? Darkness smirked and said, Because I'm going to take your body and put you in that seal and know how it feels. Naruto yelled in anger and said, Never, he took. Swing and swing at him with all of his force yelling, You monster get out of my body. He bursted into a concentration of fiery red chakra and it began to fill his body and give him a desirable and considerable amount of power, he roared. Darkness I'm going to kill you. Darkness dodged his first blow but a split second later he was struck in the face hard and Naruto created a shadow clone and began to form a Rasengan his red chakra creating an overwhelmingly unstable amount of chakra. He lunged at darkness with all of his might and Naruto thought for a second he had won. But he was wrong. Darkness disappeared under him and punched him hard in the gut causing him to fly into the wall of the dark corridor they were fighting in. As soon as Naruto got up and wiped the blood off his face darkness disappeared behind him and stabbed him in the back with a black kanai with Uzumaki runes carved into it that spelt. Death. Naruto didn't know what hit him. He passed out on the floor with blood pouring out of him at an alarming rate. Darkness. Laughed very darkly and maliciously as he said. I hope that is not the full extent of your power. I wouldn't want this to be too easy I need some fun at least once every hundred years Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto appeared in front of the Will of Fire's cage and started saying, Please lend me your power, I must win. A fiery golden chakra filled Naruto's body and his wound began to heal immediately, he stood up and opened his eyes with his Uzaragan activated and said, Good to see you again darkness, a hatred filled darkness eyes and he pointed a finger at Naruto's figure and said, You. The figure of Naruto's body smirked and said, Remember my name I am the Will of Fire. Darkness laughed very darkly and said, well, well this is going to be more fun than I thought. Darkness lunged at the will of fire Naruto with all of his might, forming a Rasengan of dark chakra, he in return formed a concentration of glowing golden chakra and said, Golden Rasengan. Darkness lunged at him in return and yelled, Demon Rasengan. There was an explosion of chakra and. Naruto fell face first. Darkness began to laugh darkly louder and louder as he said, I am finally satisfied, when he finished those. Words he crumbled into ashes and disappeared in a sparkle of the last of his chakra pouring out. Naruto opened his eyes and the part of his eyes that were black. Were now a stunning gold with red pupils and he said, That's right I remember what true power is, prepare yourself Itachi. Naruto concentrated fiery red and stunning gold chakra in his hand and lunged at Itachi with all of his might as he yelled, You're mine Itachi. Golden Rasengan. A large burst of chakra blinded everyone in sight. Itachi dodged and threw kanai infused with explosive seals. Naruto quickly drew chakra into his eyes by instinct and shot an invisible burst of chakra that made the seals go off halfway between him and Itachi. There was an explosion and Itachi and Naruto appeared on the top of two trees facing each other. Itachi activated his Sharingan and closed his eyes for a second to draw in chakra, he opened them and said, Mangeku Sharingan. Naruto caught his eye and was locked in his gaze. He was swirling around and floating through darkness, 
his head hurt and he couldn't remember where he was, about a thousand Itachis smirked and said, prepare yourself Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto turned around with his Uzaragan glowing bright gold and blood red and said, get out of my head. His hands turned into razor sharp claws, his eyes narrowed and whiskers appeared on his face, his teeth shifted into razor sharp fangs and red chakra surrounded his body in the form of a fox, a long tail of red chakra formed and he was on all fours, with a large burst of speed Naruto disappeared and appeared behind each form of Itachi and slashed his glowing red claws into him. Itachi dodged but felt his face get cut at the sharp concentration of red chakra. Itachi ran his finger over his cut and tasted his own blood, he looked at Naruto with disgust and anger. You're stronger than I expected but we need the power of that fox inside of you so don't think it's over. With a flash Itachi disappeared and Naruto woke up, when he opened his eyes Neji, Jiraiya, and Hanada were standing over Naruto, his transformation stopped and reversed as his seal on his stomach glowed bright red then disappeared, he got up and Hanada burst into tears and pulled Naruto into a hug and said, oh Naruto-kun I was so worried about you. Naruto smiled and squeezed her hand as he replied, I'm fine Hanada I was more worried about you. Hanada blushed and said, I'm alright Naruto-kun, can you walk? Naruto got up and said, I'm fine believe I it. But he was cut off as an expression of shock filled his face and he fell into the ground face first and blacked out. All he could hear were the voices of Hanada, Neji, and Jiraiya then there was only darkness. He was floating in a pool of warm light and he felt relieved and happy. I may have not defeated Itachi but I defeated my own darkness to draw out my true power, and that is just as good as a victory to him. He looked around and he was in dark corridor, he walked down a familiar path and came once again to a darkly lit circular room. Placed along the walls were cages with parts of his ego listed above them, the only ones that remained were, love, peace, regret, happiness, loneliness, and his light withing him. The Will of Fire Naruto stopped at this cage and touched the lock with his hand, as soon as his fingertips made contact the lock along with the bars disappeared into thin air and the occupant inside smiled and said, it's good to see you Naruto I was worried about you when I saw how obsessed you became with, darkness, power. Naruto frowned and responded, I'm sorry it's just I I never realized I had a connection with your power as well, light Naruto smiled and said, that's just the thing Naruto darkness was a demon when he told you he was a part of you he was only half true. The only reason he was a part of you was because of your bloodline inheritance of the demon. I on the other hand am a part of yourself, I'm your power although I do have a form and live in your seal but unlike darkness I am not a parasite but more like a mentor. Not a demon's power, there was never a seal on me you just needed a little nudge to become aware of your own true power. Darkness was the yang of your true power and I am your ying, you have obtained my power through your battle with darkness which you fought marvelously, good luck with your journey you can talk to me anytime you need me. Naruto wake up your friends are waiting for you. Naruto woke up with a jolt, he was in a tent on the bed with Hanada next to him, sleeping with her arms wrapped around him, Naruto released himself gently from her loving grip as he got up and looked at the stars as he became deep in thought about what his ancestors had told him through the clan's files, that there were nine levels of Uzaragan, one was 100% of his own. Chakra drawn into the chakra canal behind his eyes. Two was with his red chakra, three was his golden chakra. Four was a mixture of his gold and blue chakra, five was a mixture of his red and gold chakra. Six was using a twent five percent of each of his chakras and combining all three of them together, seven was using fifty percent of the full power of all three of his chakras, eight was using seventy five percent of all three of his chakra supplies, and finally nine was the mixture of one hundred percent of the full power of all three of his chakra supplies. This level would require some very intense chakra control training so what kind of training should I do? He couldn't think of anything and started to become frustrated and after a minute he gave up and looked into space in silence, who should he go to for those kind of techniques? Out of nowhere Jiraiya appeared next to Naruto and said, hey there Naruto you feeling better? You're lucky to be getting up after such a brutal attack on your mind. Naruto looked at Jiraiya and said, say pervy sage can you train me some more? Jiraiya sighed and said, ah come on Naruto do I really have to show you a new technique I mean isn't your Rasengan powerful enough? Naruto responded, it's not that I need you to give me chakra control techniques, Jiraiya looked stunned and said, s. Sure Naruto I just never thought I'd hear you say that, we can start in the morning. Naruto smiled at the thought of obtaining control over his powers and went to sleep once again in Hanada's arms.
The next morning they all silently packed their things and started to journey northward, Hanada and Neji took shifts in keeping lookout. With their Byakugan while they hiked and when they slept which unfortunately didn't give Hanada much time to be with her Naruto-kun. It made her feel a little down that day but she was hoping for too much, as Hanada walked alongside Naruto and the other she began to think to herself. That first night together with him was so amazing I didn't think they would sleep with each other again so soon after that, so why am I so anxious to do it again, have I truly obtained that much of a sexual appetite for my lover? She blushed bright red at the thought. Naruto looked over his shoulder and said with a wink. Doing all right there Hanada-chan. Hanada blushed and replied, I I'm f fine Naruto-kun. Naruto looked at her for a minute and said. All right if you're sure you just got me worried there for a second. Naruto turned back around and kept walking. Hanada followed and gripped his hand as she walked alongside him. Naruto squeezed her hand once gently walked with her with Neji in the front so he can scan for the enemy with his Byakugan, Jiraiya behind Neji, Naruto behind Jiraiya, and Hanada in the very back to look out for enemy attacks with her Byakugan. They kept this rotation going for another day until they stumbled upon what looked like an open field with a big tree in the middle, Jiraiya smiled and said, all right Naruto lesson one of your chakra control exercises begins now. Naruto looked up in wonder and said, all right Jiraiya tell me what to do. Jiraiya closed his eyes and took a deep breath, and said, you remember these dreams you tell me about where you go inside yourself. Naruto nodded and Jiraiya continued, to get to these states of power you do this subconsciously sometimes leading to dark circumstances, that glowing gold chakra that you had. I don't know what it was but if you can enter your inner world at will you will have 100%. Access to all the power, as for the nine-tailed fox, well let's just say you're on your own. Naruto took a deep breath as he soaked in the information and asked. Alright what can I do to achieve that? Jiraiya smiled and said, just close your eyes and concentrate. Naruto sighed at the lack of information and closed his eyes in concentration. Jiraiya performed a few hand signs and said, star. Style. Internal projection jutsu. Naruto felt his body go cold and he blacked out, all he could hear was the dripping of water, he slowly opened his eyes and looked around him, he wandered around long dark corridors until he found the path that led to the dark circular chamber with all of his parts of his ego were lined up in cages, he walked toward the will of fire's cage and said, will of fire will you give me 100% of your power? The will of fire. Naruto smiled and said, you still don't get it Naruto I am your power and with a burst of golden chakra he disappeared and all his chakra molded with Naruto's being and he felt excited beyond words to test what he was capable of, he turned and walked along the path which he recognized led to the nine-tailed demon fox's cage, he took it and found himself once again in front of a giant cage with the seal of the fourth Hokage placed on the lock, the fox glared out of his cage and bared his teeth as he said, what do you want of me boy? Naruto snickered and said, you damn well know what I came here for now stop holding out on me and give me the full extent of your power. The demon laughed maliciously and replied, are you sure you can handle that power boy you're only a mere mortal. Naruto's eyes glowed a brilliant golden texture with a bright red pupil in the middle with three glowing red dots rotating around his center pupil as he looked up with his Uzaragan activated and said darkly, don't underestimate me fox. The fox laughed darkly louder and louder until he said at last, very well last of the Uzumaki clan I will grant you all of my power but don't think for a second you've mastered my chakra I am merely lending you my power. Naruto felt a giant rush of chakra fill his body and he slowly opened his eyes. Naruto he had been in his inner world for what felt to him felt like at least 20 minutes at least but in reality and from Jiraiya's, Hanada's and Neji's perspective he only had his eyes closed for about a minute and he said immediately, all right what now pervy? Sage? Jiraiya grinned and said, nothing Naruto you just completed lesson 1, and 2 apparently. Naruto became aware of how much chakra was forming in his body and tried his best to concentrate it. Into his body, it took a bit of strain and concentration but after about a minute of trying he suppresses, concentrates and mixes all the demon chakra with his own causing his regular chakra to become a bright fiery purple, he grinned and felt one step closer towards being Hokage as he said, so what now pervy sage? Jiraiya grabbed his bag and began walking as he replied, we're done for now Naruto you need to do some training of your own before we can move on to step 2 so if you have any time in between now and when we get to the valley of time. Naruto sighed and said, fine but this feels like the Chunin exams all over again, he seemed a little dark and walked in front of everybody, 
Jiraiya walked next to Hanada and whispered in her ear. Why don't you try cheering Naruto up? Hanada nodded and went to Naruto's side and gripped his hand as they walked alongside each other. Hanada rested her head on Naruto's shoulder as they walked and she whispered, Are you alright Naruto-kun? Naruto sighed and nodded as he said, I'm fine Hanada-chan I just need to do as Jiraiya says and get some training done on my own I mean how can I become the next Hokage as I have to rely on someone else for anything, Hanada nodded. Wrapper her arms around him and whispered in his ear. You know even a Hokage doesn't do everything himself. Let me help you Naruto-kun I'm here for you. Naruto smiled and hugged her back as he thought. I know you are Hanada I'm sorry for denying you. They kept walking north and from what Jiraiya had said they were a mere half day's time from their destination. What adventures await our blonde ninja hero and his companions? Naruto, Hanada, Neji, and Jiraiya continued walking north until they found themselves surrounded by gigantic stones and a valley began opening up wider into the place that is known as Time Valley. Naruto gazed in wonder at what looked like a giant dusty old antique mirror with powerful seals places along sacred rope that tied the mirror down, it looked as though many people may have died in order to seal up this old mirror, what possible reason would they seal up a chance to visit other worlds let alone give your life to make sure it didn't happen? Just the very thought of the idea made his head hurt, he didn't understand but if someone as cold hearted and power hungry as Orochimaru wants its power then it must lead to some invincible power. All the information suggests is a weapon of great power and that's all the information we have at the moment. Naruto walked another step then felt as if an earthquake erupted all around them, he almost fell on top of Hanada and he and her were thrown to the ground by the overwhelming force, Naruto saw a giant purple snake appear with Orochimaru, Sasuke and Kabuto on the top of its head and Jiraiya looked up and yelled, Orochimaru. Naruto looked up as well and glared at the image of Sasuke that stood in front of him, he yelled, Sasuke. Orochimaru and Sasuke both grinned sinisterly and Orochimaru looked down and said, Well, well my fellow San and Jiraiya it's been a while, Jiraiya grinned and said. Sure has Orochimaru, he performed a few quick hand signs and said, summoning Jutsu. The boss toad appeared with Jiraiya on top of his head facing Orochimaru and the boss toad asked, What's this all about Jiraiya? He took a look around and saw Orochimaru's snake, unsheathed his sword and said with a smile, I see, Orochimaru and Jiraiya faced off and each attacked at once, Kabuto remained by Orochimaru's side while Sasuke jumped off the snake and ran towards Neji and Hanada, Naruto opened his eyes and activated his Uzaragan causing his eyes to glow a brilliant gold and a bright demon red. Grabbed his kanai and with a burst of red and golden chakra he moved in front of Neji and Hanada so fast to Naruto it was as if he had only taken a few steps, he grabbed three kanai infused with explosive seals and threw them in Sasuke's area, he dodged and with amazing speed and skill he activated his curse mark, gathered chakra in his hand and ran right at Naruto with a black orb of unstable chakra and yelled, Chidori. Naruto and a shadow clone gathered as much gold and red chakra in his hand as he possibly could and ran toward Sasuke as he yelled, Rasengan. There was a large explosion of chakra and Sasuke seemed just a bit out of breath. Naruto's chakra level kept increasing at an alarming rate and poured into his eyes causing his speed and power to tenfold, he appeared next to Sasuke and struck at him, Sasuke dodged, activating his dark mark and his Sharingan at the same time as he smirked and said, well, well someone's been training hard. Naruto got so pissed at these words and charged at Sasuke with all of his might as he yelled, Sasuke. He landed a blow on him with amazing speed and accuracy knocking him back 20 feet with the back of his fist, he looked down at Sasuke darkly and said, you have no idea how much you made Sakura suffer, and for that I'm going to make you pay. Sasuke laughed and said, you defeat or even hurt me, your hatred is not strong enough. Naruto snickered and said, don't give me that crap I fought on par with your beloved older brother don't you dare underestimate me. Sasuke stared at him at disbelief and snickered in return as he said, yeah right if you ever fought him you would be dead or defeated within an instant. Naruto sighed and said, you know what Sasuke I could truly care. Less whether or not you believe me but even an Uchiha can believe what he sees. Naruto exploded with red, gold, and blue chakra and formed an explosive ball of chakra within a few seconds, Sasuke disappeared and gathered as much of the dark mark's chakra into his Chidori as he could and yelled, Chidori. It had been for only a few seconds but both Naruto and Sasuke formed their attacks in sync. He had formed his Rasengan and rushed toward Sasuke yelling, Rasengan. 
Sasuke rushed at Naruto with all of his power and lunged at Naruto hard. There was an explosion. He was blown backwards into a rock and Naruto appeared in front of him, pinning him against the rock and holding a kanai to his throat. After a minute Naruto released his grip and said, Now we're even and we know who's stronger but next time I see you in battle. He paused and glared at him with disgust. I'll kill you. Naruto disappeared and reappeared next to Hanada. Sasuke seemed to be in a daze like he refused to believe what had just happened, like it was an illusion and never happened, he formed a sinister smile and disappeared. A moment later he appeared next to Kabuto, Jiraiya and Orochimaru were locked in combat sending a barrage of jutsus back and forth until Orochimaru laughed sinisterly and said, we would love to play with you all but unfortunately I am a very busy man. The snake disappeared and all of the sudden they felt as if another earthquake had erupted all around them and the two points where the chains held down the giant rusty mirror began to rise up as two pedestals with forbidden seals placed along each pedestal, Sasuke and Kabuto performed the same jutsu in sync and yelled, forbidden jutsu. Celestial gate release. There was a giant rush of super powerful chakra and a breeze and the giant dusty mirror shined a pearl white like it was brand new again. The dusty glass turned into a glowing blue substance that looked like thick glowing sky blue water. Sasuke and Kabuto jumped into the gateway swiftly and Orochimaru turned around and said, Your lives are all worthless to me I'd kill you all if I had the time, but now I must say goodbye until next time. With a few steps he walked through the gateway. Naruto stared at the gateway in awe and Jiraiya got off of Boss Toad and said, What are you staring at fool hurry into the gateway? Naruto, Hanada. Neji, and Jiraiya all rushed toward the gate and barely managed to jump in the gateway in time before it closed behind them. They were floating through space. They felt like they were swimming in water but they could breath and they weren't wet. They saw a light at the end of a tunnel and before they could react they were all suddenly dragged downward and spiraled down into complete darkness. A large burst of chakra manifested from an invisible source causing a large, ancient-looking gateway to glow a bright blue, as the energy formed a gateway of what appeared to be a gooey-like substance manifested. A moment later three figures emerged from the gateway. Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Sasuke each looked around in the world they had arrived in. From what Sasuke could tell there was no sign of any shinobi or living thing for that matter in the area. Before Sasuke questioned his master however Orochimaru silenced him with a wave of his hand and began walking forward, Kabuto and Sasuke followed without question. Fifteen minutes later a large ancient-looking gateway once again filled with chakra from a seemingly invisible source and after a burst of energy four figured emerged from the gateway. As soon as they left the gateway it lost all power and shut itself off. Neji, Jiraiya, Hanada and Naruto all got up and brushed themselves off. Almost everyone had landed on their feet as they came through the gateway, Naruto on the other hand. Wasn't so lucky. Naruto rubbed his head and cursed as he got to his feet. Naruto took a quick look around and after a minute he said. Hey pervy sage. Jiraiya winced in anger as he replied. How many years have I told you to not call me that? Hanada giggled and Neji smiled slightly as Naruto said. Yay, yay. Jiraiya. Jiraiya sighed as he responded. What is it Naruto? Naruto looked around as he said. Where did Orochimaru, Kabuto and Sasuke go? Jiraiya grinned as he said. Try that jutsu you were telling me about. Naruto grinned wide as he said, Oh yeah. Naruto closed his eyes and performed a set of quick hand signs as he yelled out, Demon style. Chakra tracking jutsu. Naruto clasped his hands together and began to draw out a large amount of chakra as noticeable changes appeared on his body. His body transformed like the nine tailed fox that was imprisoned within him was influencing him, but it seemed as if he had control over the transformation. Naruto's senses were heightened. His eyes could zoom in on targets almost like a pair of binoculars but the most heightened of all five of his senses was his smell. Naruto could see Sasuke's chakra signature lingering in the air like a trail of colored smoke and immediately began following it as he called back to the rest of the group. Follow me. Jiraiya, Hanada and Neji all made eye contact and nodded in agreement as they began following Naruto. After an hour of constant searching the trail had ended in a set of Sasuke's clothes, Naruto sighed as he said, Neji could you use your Byakugan and do a quick scan of the area? Neji nodded and performed the necessary hand signs as he said, Byakugan. Neji scanned the area to the last detail, constantly searching, after a minute he deactivated his bloodline limit and said, sorry Naruto it seems they have deceived us. Naruto gripped Sasuke's clothes in his fist as he thought, damn you Orochimaru what are you up to? 
Orochimaru, Sasuke, and Kabuto. All stood over a cliff with their eyes widened in disbelief, in the valley in front of them there were countless hordes of demons all giving off ridiculously large amounts of sinister feeling chakra and killing intent coming from each and every one of them, the snake Sanin laughed darkly as he said, gentlemen let us make a weapon, just as the five great shinobi nations did sixteen years ago. A deadly looking horde of demons lunged themselves at Sasuke. While Orochimaru and Kabuto held off the prized five-tailed phoenix demon, Orochimaru summoned a large snake to keep it busy as he performed a long sequence of hand signs and yelled, Forbidden Jutsu! Death Reaper's Seal! Orochimaru with his free hand sent a barrage of snakes to grab and hold Kabuto like a second hand. Kabuto screamed in pain as he said, What are you doing Lord Orochimaru? Orochimaru laughed darkly as he replied, Offering you as a sacrifice. Kabuto looked in horror as the summoned Shinigami snickered and moved toward him, and with a flick of his wrist an embodiment of chakra manifests and rips Kabuto's soul from his body and throws Kabuto into the depths of the Death Reaper's belly. The Shinigami then turned to the seven-tailed phoenix demon and with a slash of his sword the demon's body was destroyed and with its remaining power it sealed the demon spirit into the body of Sasuke Uchiha. The Shinigami happy with its sacrifice vanished leaving the beaten body of Sasuke on the ground with a peculiar double spiral seal on his stomach. Orochimaru grabbed Sasuke with a menacing grin on his face as he thought. Sasuke is now a Jinchuriki with a powerful demon sealed within his body along with a bloodline limit, my prized body is becoming stronger, the nine tails will be no match for five tails and the Sharingan. And with those words the snake Sanin vanished into oblivion along with his prized Jinchuriki vessel. Naruto, Neji, Jiraiya, and Hanada were frantically searching for Orochimaru's trail, after about a half hour Neji spoke out. Everyone I found Kabuto, but something's wrong with his body. This comment immediately caught everyone's attention and Jiraiya said, take us to him. There were two craters in the ground as scars of the previous encounter as Naruto and the rest of the group appeared next to. Kabuto's body and Neji stared at Kabuto with a look of fear crossed with curiosity. Jiraiya immediately saw this and asked, what is it? Neji continued to stare as he said, his body is still alive but I can't see any traces of his chakra or spirit. Jiraiya looked down at the ground darkly as he said, damn you Orochimaru what are you up to? Sasuke stirred and as he opened his eyes he found he was lying down on a bed in a very dark place, he got up and when he looked down at his stomach there was a strange seal placed there. He was about to get up when all of the sudden an agonizing pain shot through his body. He screamed as his eyes became bloodshot and fiery red chakra poured out of his body constantly, seven spiraling vortexes of chakra erupted from his many chakra points, burning everything it touches, after a minute Sasuke strained his body and released his dark mark and forced the demon's chakra into submission before he sealed his dark mark shortly afterward. The door opened and Orochimaru emerged from the doorway, he snickered darkly as he said, Sasuke we are going to do some training, follow me. Sasuke nodded with a dark look on his face as he replied, as you wish Lord Orochimaru. Jiraiya, Neji and Hanada all watched as Naruto desperately searched the area they had discovered Kabuto's body, he even sent out a scouting unit of his shadow clones to try and track Orochimaru and Sasuke down, after a few hours Jiraiya placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder and said, Naruto it will be harder to track them down during the night, it would be best to set up camp, get some rest and try again tomorrow morning. Naruto sighed and replied, yeah you're right Jiraiya. And with those words Naruto conjured up another group of shadow clones to gather firewood and fish in the river while Naruto unfolded his sleeping bag. Neji and Hanada set up their sleeping bags as well as Naruto and Jiraiya got the fire started. Jiraiya and Neji had gone to sleep and the second they appeared to be asleep Hanada inches herself closer to Naruto and pressed herself agazan him. Naruto smiled and cuddled with her as he ran his fingertips through her hair. Hanada smiled as he held her in his arms and after a moment of silence she said, don't worry Naruto I'm sure we'll find Sasuke. Naruto smiled and kissed her cheek as he replied, I'm sure we will too Hanada, sorry if I'm obsessing over this a little, once upon a time Sasuke Uchiha was my best friend but now he's just a traitor. Who deserves death? The main reason I wanted to get Sasuke back was to make Sakura happy. That is until you came into my life. Naruto smiled warmly at Hanada causing her to blush and bury her face in his chest, Naruto laughed and kissed her lips deeply as he whispered, I'm glad you're here for me Hanada. 
and with those words the lovers fell asleep in each other's arms, unaware of the events yet to take place. Orochimaru grinned maliciously and looked down at his prized Jinchuriki apprentice as he said, Sasuke, your training is complete, there is nothing left for me to teach you. A dark grin appeared on Sasuke's face and in a blink of an eye Sasuke appeared behind his master and swiftly sliced him in half. Orochimaru looked at his traitorous comrade as he asked weakly, You traitor, why? Sasuke laughed maliciously and glared at his former master with a powerful hatred reflecting in his eyes. After his laughter died down Sasuke said, It's just as you said Orochimaru, you have nothing left to teach me which no longer makes you my master. And with those final words Sasuke generated a Chidori through his blade and disintegrated the form of the former legendary Sanin. Naruto suddenly jolted awake as he sensed Sasuke's chakra signature spike and then disappear. Naruto quickly grabbed his headband and adjusted it to his forehead. Hanada stirred in her sleep and looked up at Naruto sleepily, lightly rubbing her eyes as she said, What is it Naruto-kun? Is something wrong? Naruto shook his head and said, It's nothing Hanada you just go back to sleep I just wanted to get a breathe of fresh air. As soon as Naruto was sure Hanada was asleep Naruto got his gear together silently and proceeded in the direction he felt Sasuke's chakra signature spike. Just as he was a mere five minutes from camp a voice said, You're not a very good liar, are you Naruto? Naruto sighed and turned to his teacher and said, I wanted to go alone so you and Neji could look after Hanada. Jiraiya had a very serious look on his face as he replied, Fool! You think you could take on Sasuke and Orochimaru? I'm coming with you and as for Hanada's safety I left Neji in charge of guarding her. Life. It's his duty as a member of the Hyuga clan and Neji is also a full-fledged Junin and fully capable of protecting her, we can leave her in his care. Naruto sighed and replied, You'd come with me no matter what I said ha Jiraiya sensei. With this comment Jiraiya chuckled and said. It's as they say, like student, like teacher, Naruto and Jiraiya raced across mountaintops as the concentrated mass of chakra, as they got closer the source of chakra gave a massive spike causing Jiraiya to say, That feels like. The Kyubi's chakra, Naruto finished for him. Naruto and Jiraiya made eye contact to confirm they understood the seriousness of the situation and sped toward their final target. At the source of power Jiraiya and Naruto were heading toward Sasuke laughed maniacally as he said, this power, with this. Itachi is dead for sure, and Naruto you will be my stepping stone toward absolute victory. With those words Sasuke opened his eyes, they were glowing bright red, Sasuke struggled but with the help of his Sharingan he managed to recede the demon's influence for now at least, Sasuke began to laugh again as he said, Naruto come to me. Let's finish this. Naruto and Jiraiya were very close to their target but suddenly Jiraiya stopped, this naturally caused Naruto to stop as well as he turned to Jiraiya and asked, what's wrong? Jiraiya's eyes shot wide open as he threw himself into Naruto and said, look out. Jiraiya's evasive maneuver had caused him and Naruto to barely escape a barrage of seemingly endless kanai and shuriken. As soon as the attack had ceased a very dark laughter erupts the battlefield as the voice OS Sasuke said. You shouldn't be so careless Naruto. And with that statement an army of Sasuke clones appeared and began charging at Naruto and Jiraiya. Naruto created an army of shadow clones to counter and keep Sasuke's clones busy as he raced toward Sasuke a Rasengan charging up in the palm of his hand as he roared, Sasuke. There was an enormous explosion of chakra as the entire battlefield was illuminated with a seemingly celestial bright light. When the light dimmed Naruto and Sasuke were in mortal combat, each exchanging blows on par with each of their respective blades, Naruto did not own a sword but Jiraiya had given him one for self-protection after they had entered the celestial gate. Sasuke backed up a good distance and performed a series of hand signs as he called out, fire style, inferno dome jutsu, immediately a dome of flame surrounded Naruto and Sasuke, cutting Naruto off from Jiraiya's support, Sasuke laughed and said, it's just you and me now Naruto, Sasuke grinned darkly and held his blade out in front of him and yelled, Chidori. Sasuke's chakra elementally composed into electricity and seemed to extend the blade the blade with that very chakra and shot forward at an incredible speed. Naruto barely dodged, the blade nicking his shoulder the smell of burnt flesh and fabric in the air. Naruto stared down his opponent, sensing the same hostility from his former comrade he sensed back at their fight at Valley's End 4. Years ago. Naruto stared at Sasuke with years of hatred and betrayal as he found his resolve and said in a dark voice. 
Sasuke, you can forget about me bringing you back to the village, because I'll kill you. It's not as if I broke my promise to Sakura she can see your corpse for herself when I do bring you back. Naruto charged as much chakra as he could as he produced a countless number of clones, Naruto then grinned as he threw a smoke bomb into the middle of the fight to keep Sasuke busy. As the smoke cleared Naruto opened his eyes, a bright white light shining from them, with a white Rasengan charging in his right hand. Sasuke grinned maliciously and charged up a demonic red Chidori in the palm of his hand as he said to Naruto. You're wasting your time Naruto. I have a demon and the Sharingan. I killed Lord Orochimaru with this power, you don't stand a chance. Naruto clenched his free fist in fury and lunged forward at Sasuke as he called back. Fool. You think I get all this power from that stupid fox? This power is all in my bloodline. And with those final words the two shinobi each delivered their ultimate blow, each shinobi completely draining their chakra supply. The winner would be determined by power. Unfortunately for Sasuke he had underestimated the number one unpredictable shinobi. Sasuke stared down at the palm that plunged straight through his chest, the Uchiha's last words were. Impossible, how could I? Lose? And with Sasuke's final words his corpse fell to the ground. Immediately following the Uchiha's demise the barrier of fire that had. Separated Naruto from Jiraiya. Jiraiya ran over and asked. Naruto are you alright? What happened? Naruto stared blankly at the fallen former shinobi on the ground and said, he tried to kill me I had no choice. Jiraiya nodded and suddenly something hit him and he said almost in mid-thought, but Orochimaru, as dead, Naruto finished for him. Jiraiya's eyes opened wide in shock but after a moment to compose himself. Jiraiya looked down at the ground and responded, I see. Naruto who was in complete understanding with what his sensei was feeling for he too once considered Orochimaru a friend like Naruto had considered Sasuke, if only he knew how much the two were the same earlier in his life, Naruto grinned and said. Come on Jiraiya sensei everyone's waiting for us, Jiraiya nodded as he and Naruto headed toward the campsite, Naruto carrying. Sasuke's body. Hinata screamed and twisted her body violently trying to escape Neji's grasp as she practically cried out. Neji let me go. What if something happened to him? Neji tried harder to calm down the Hyuga heiress as he sighed and said, Hinata I promised Jiraiya I would look after you, I'm sure. Naruto wouldn't want you going anyway. How would he feel as wasn't able to protect you? Hinata gave up her struggle against her cousin as she dropped to her knees, tears running down her cheeks as she said, I know that, but. Neji took a deep breathe to calm down and said, Hinata Naruto's strong he'll come out of this alive trust me, I've fought him. Neji ended with a smirk. Neji's facial expression when he thought of Nerut brought a smile to his face as she said, thank you Neji. As if on cue Naruto and Jiraiya appeared in the distance, Jiraiya. Waving back at Hanada, Naruto's facial expression however seemed clouded and deep in thought. Hanada ran towards her lover expecting him to open his arms for her, when he didn't she looked up questionably and asked, Naruto what do you have there? Naruto sighed and smiled as he walked past her and replied, just the body of a former comrade. A large ancient looking gateway suddenly glowed blue and was bathed in a seemingly celestial light. After the light had dimmed and vanished four figures emerged from the gateway. After they exited Naruto and Jiraiya made eye contact and nodded in understanding of what had to be done. Together Naruto and Jiraiya replaced the seal on the celestial gate. A rune of glowing chakra shaped like a lock almost seemed to be engraved into the very gateway itself. And with those finishing acts the group of shinobi headed back towards the village hidden in the leaves, the only place they could call home. Five days later, Naruto, Jiraiya, Hanada, and Neji had finally arrived at the gates of Konoha. As Naruto walked toward the Hokage Tower carrying the body there, Great Sasuke Uchiha, the villagers began to all give. Naruto very dirty looks, dirtier than usual but Naruto didn't care, it's not like he expected to be thought of as a hero by ending the mission like this, there was no other option open to him, Sasuke had crossed over to the dark side and nothing he could have ever done could have brought him back, his latest experiences definitely taught him that lesson well. After what seemed like an eternity from Naruto's perspective Naruto and the rest of their squad had arrived at the Hokage Tower, Naruto gave a light knock and proceeded to enter as he heard his reply from the other side of the door say, come in. Naruto, Hanada, Jiraiya, and Neji all entered the Hokage's office, Tsunade took a quick glance over the squad and asked, 
Did you complete your mission? Maruto nodded and replied, Orochimaru is dead. Tsunade's eyes widened in shock for a moment but after a moment to compose herself she replied, I see so I take it you're the one who defeated him Naruto. Naruto shook his head and replied, No it was Sasuke. Tsunade was very surprised at this and a smile came to her face as she asked, So I take it you brought him back? Naruto nodded and put Sasuke's body on the ground, tears starting to form in Naruto's eyes no matter how much he wished he could control his emotions now at all times. Naruto took a moment to breathe deeply and clear his thoughts as he said. I managed to bring him back and fulfill my promise to Sakura but not the way I had intended, it was at the cost of his life and he left me no choice. After Naruto finished he dropped down to his knees and cried. Hanada appeared by Naruto's side, a warm smile on her face as she pressed Naruto's face into her chest and began to caress his blonde locks as she said, It's alright Naruto-kun let everything out, it's not your fault. Naruto looked up at Hanada, his face stained with his own tears and began to cry into his lover's embrace. Remembering all over again the reason he fell in love with her, the end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.